is here. Awesome, would you guys like to uh, share your screens? Oh yeah, everyone is here. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, share my screen now. Hello there. I just want to make sure you guys could see it. Yep. Yes. Okay, um, okay so should we start? Yes, please. Good afternoon. We are the gurus and today we will be presenting on sustainable co-working brought to you by Workdone. So this is Helen. Helen is a freelancer who works as a content creator in Montreal. And so she always likes to use co-working spaces to share creative ideas with others. However, as of recent, she has been facing a variety of issues that affect her work output. Due to COVID-19, Helen cannot always find a good co-working space because of capacity restrictions. And when she does, she has become extra wary of contagion. So the lack of appropriate social distancing measures gives her a lot of anxiety. Also, because she is afraid of people stealing her creative ideas for important clients, she finds a huge privacy issues when making confidential calls or meetings with clients. The noise that exists also from so many people being present undermines her efficiency at work. The lack of standardization and consistency among the same co-working spaces across different locations affects her customer experience. And finally, she finds that co-working spaces have very high prices. So we found an opportunity to help out Helen because Workdone already wants to improve its service offering along those lines. So we identified our objective as developing a scalable solution that Workdone can use across its entire network. Based on our analysis, our solution must optimize the customer experience in all its aspects across locations. So we designed a versatile, easy to assemble compartment that can fit anywhere and an app that allows for a touchless experience. The solution will be targeting individuals and employees and business uh, individual employees and businesses in Canada. But what's to come out of that solution? It's easily assembled and stored. It has three modes of operation that improve the customer experience. It's soundproof. It's sustainable along economic, social, and environmental lines, and its price is sixty percent lower than the industry average. Now let's move on to an analysis of our market. It's important to note that the market currently stands uh, at $8.24 billion globally. Um, our SAM stands at $2.16 billion and our target market stands at $1.2 billion. In terms of comp competition, uh, the two biggest international competitors are IWG and WeWork, who are dominating the US market specifically. However, our two biggest local competitors in Canada are ECTO and Le Tableau Blanc. They have the most diversified services and features and their main competitive advantage that they both rely on is aesthetic and creativity, which is why Workdone through our solution will be able to compete better with those companies. What separates Workdone from its competitors is its approach to co-working because unlike those competitors, it doesn't simply rent out um, unused office space, it finds and curates productive workspace communities by partnering with local business owners. And now let's introduce Cube Den. Introducing to you Cube Den, our easy to assemble and easy to store co-working space. As you can see, our booth consists of four parts, two identical parts called A and two identical parts called B, which can be easily fitted together, creating a, a booth around restaurant tables. The dimensions of each part are shown uh, with an elaboration on the choice of the dimensions in the appendix uh, according to the dimension of an average table size and the height of an, uh, an average person. Additionally, each part consists of a hinge to allow it to fold so that it can be easily stored when not in use. The cube then consists of a door and a glass window to allow people within a cube then to be able to view the rest of the restaurant while working peacefully. Additionally, our app will allow users to open the windows to allow people in different cube dens to socialize with one another if they would like to do so while being socially distant. So what is cube then made of? 
It's made of redwood, uh, redwood lined with cork. With redwood being strong, having a low density, it's durable and sustainable, while the cork lining allows people inside the work to work peacefully since it's soundproof. Additionally, cork is made uh, from recyclable material. The total weight of each cube uh, part is 15 kilograms, allowing the workers to carry them with the, uh, uh, two workers to carry them easily. So, how many cube do we estimate uh, to have per, uh, per uh, venue? We estimate that we will need a maximum number of 15 cube per an average size restaurant. Each cube bin will have a battery charged power outlet to allow the users to charge their devices, in addition to an access point per cube bin to enhance the internet connectivity within each cube. Booking your next co-working space has never been easier. Introducing the new Cube Den app. The incorporation of the app allows for visual booking calendar, push notifications for reminders, syncing with your personal calendar, and it also eliminates the possibility of any conflicts or overbooking. And finally, the preparation time between, uh, it allows for preparation time between bookings uh, in order to account for the disinfections. Aligning with our top mission of prioritizing safety and privacy, CubeDen will be able to define a touchless access, uh, access experience. The locking and unlocking of the cubes will be done with the scanners and authorized within our app. Moreover, the slides within the cube's door, uh, cube, uh, cube Den's door will be through the app to achieve the different level of privacy previously mentioned. On the back end, with the use of the sensors on the phone, we can automate the access completely, allowing for 100% uh, automated access control with no need for human contact. Our goal was to build a positive brand image for work then. So we wanted to ask the question, why should an individual choose our co-working space? There are four main key advantages for CubeDen that allows us to stand out. The first is QuirkDen being ahead of its game in introducing this tech-enabled solution. The second point is the field-centric co-workings, which is a reliable way in order for us to achieve recognition, for example, creating co-working spaces for digital nomads or specific groups. Uh, moreover, uh, membership benefits, which would be uh, uh, you know, allowing for gamification uh, through the app rewards to CubeDen's customers. Finally, we, we could be able to strike the balance between standardization and customization by giving the same look and feel, but also giving a different experience for every customer through the three modes of privacy. How are we going to implement this three envisioned space? It's a very simple task. We first start by taking out all the parts from the storage. We unfold the parts A and B that were previously shown in our, de our design, and then we assemble them, and then we can fold the parts again and place them in storage. Uh, this shows how the design is very easily stored and maintained. Finally, let's take a look at the risks and the mitigation. The first risk that we identified was the theft of equipment. And we mitigated that by allowing the unlocking to be done by the, only the registered person. The second risk is access management, where authorization is done on the back end with no human contact. Uh, the heavy material, which would, could be hard to carry on the workers, uh, we mitigated that by choosing the redwood, which has lower density. And finally, for any privacy issues, we've already mentioned that we used a soundproof using the cork lining. So now to move on to marketing. How did we segment our market? We used three factors, geographic, behavioral, and psychographic to segment both individual employees and uh, companies as customers. So geographically, we would target Montreal as it has the most existing and future locations of work there. Uh, existing locations include Knox Tavern and Riverside St. Henry. And also, there are three future locations uh, that are very that have a very high potential that are being set up in West Island, Burgundy Lion, and Brossard. We would also target Laval in Quebec, Canada, as it has uh, it is a high potential future location, expecting to have location in uh, Centropolis Laval, which is going to open very soon. And on the longer term, we would be targeting uh, areas where there's opportunity to capture market share, since market share is being lost by, for example, Notel in Toronto, Serendipity Labs in uh, Phoenix and Milwaukee, and by Breather in New York City, which is another Canadian company. In terms of B2B and B2C segmentation, this chart sort of, sort of combines both to show how we segmented the market. So as you can see, this is the percentage of co-working space users in terms of individuals and companies. 
the companies that would most benefit from our solution would be SMEs and startup teams. As you can see, SMEs and startup teams are the highest percentage users. So those are the companies we would be targeting. Uh, and we would be targeting them with an emphasis on companies fitting our geographic criteria, companies leveraging teleworking and remote working so that we can take advantage of that trend, and companies whose workforce, for example, requires a lot of travel. From a B2C perspective, we would mainly focus on freelancers whose work patterns are more comfortable with utilizing flexible offices. And as you can see, they are the highest percentage of individual users. But how are we going to reach that customers? That's what we move to now. We're going to promote work then as the leading disruptive co-working space service among its competitors. This is done by actually implying uh, Applying that uh, approach of safety first and taking it into the account that uh, taking into account that the customer journey will be uh, redesigned to tailor our customers' needs post COVID, and this will be also an integral part of our promotion strategy to be able to diff uh, to leverage the different types of channels through which we'll be doing our marketing. To increase the B2C marketing, we'll be marketing to individuals through relying on channels such as social media and digital media to maintain the presence among competitors and also to keep the website updated uh, by conveying timely information about the development and innovation of our co-working spaces for our customers, which also includes releasing promotional videos that emphasize the superior comfort and privacy and the whole unique selling proposition of work then. Finally, we would also focus on marketing to SMEs and startups in specific, since our strategy will be reaching them through event marketing and real-time meetings, as well as targeted ads, because these will be the main customer segments we're targeting. To position work then, we first need to look at the two main factors that are relevant for our customers, which are the price and the consistency of the place. As we can see, work then uh, scales a uh, lower price, and also it has a much higher consistency than the other market joints, since our design takes into account having a, the same feel and the same look and the same experience in every place, while enhancing the uniqueness of each location through the customizable uh, cubes. To understand that further, let's look into two different co-working spaces that were done by the same company in the same country, which is Canada, and the same city, which is Montreal. However, as you can see, both of them have the completely different look and completely different feel, which does not really promote any consistency in uh, the co-working spaces. These two were done by WeWork. Actually. Moving on to the costs. The challenge was to implement such a solution like CubeDent without actually putting a lot of pressure on the financials of WorkDen. Therefore, uh, the cost breakdown entails that we will have four main cost components, red with cork, hinges, and glass, and we also added a 20% extra cost to allow for price volatility of the materials, which yielded us a, a, a cost to build the CubeDent, which is 68% lower than the average market price which means that this is actually a scalable solution that will not affect, that will not affect work dense financials. This is the further breakdown of the cost. We can see that the startup costs are minimal and uh, the maintenance costs are also manageable within, uh, within the, the revenue streams that the work then has. But the startup cost being uh, minimal means that work then can actually market this solution quickly and makes it and which makes it fit the fail fast approach that, that work then always tries to implement that's not all since uh, since work then had always sustainability in its core values and therefore we wanted to see which sdgs in specific we are uh, or yeah we are uh, we are we're catering to. These are the goals. And to further look at them, we divided them into social, economic, and environmental goals. So socially, our solution will enable work then to continue promoting decent work and economic growth through enabling startups and SMEs to have a low-cost, full-fledged office space catered to them. And then there's the SDG number 12, which promotes responsible consumption and growth, which is what we do through the fact that tube dams are versatile enough to accommodate either individuals or also open up to and transform to host a full meeting inside the, uh, the queue. Economically, we also promote sustainable cities and sustainable growth by helping break them to continue offering its partners uh, a, an opportunity to maximize their revenues. 
And environmentally, we choose to build a cube that's using the most environmentally friendly materials, which means that this is also tackling uh, SDGs number 11 and 13. So to wrap up, Helen's experience improves considerably through work done. Our three versatile modes of design combat her COVID anxiety and her privacy issues. Uh, and also the fact that our material is soundproof makes it efficient for her to work uh, at, uh, at, at a work done location. The consistent feel of branding, uh, the consistent feel and branding improve her customer experience considerably across locations. And also the fact that our uh, price is 68% lower than the industry average makes work done uh, a very cost effective co-working space for Helen to uh, have great output at work. Thank you so much for listening. We'd be happy to answer any questions. And this is our menu. Very cool. Yeah, judges, now it's the Q&A session. And if you have any questions, feel free to fire it away for um, the presenters. Yeah, well, you know, I'm Steve, um, co-founder of Workden. Just want to say thanks. Good job, guys. Way to go. Um, very cool, you know. Um, Quick question on one thing. Can we go back to the slide where you introduced uh, cube den? It's kind of a kind of fun play on words. If possible. Perfect. Excellent. So um, <clears throat> love the modular feel to it. Obviously, the inspiration came from the phone booths, which is a very popular uh, offer in major co-working spaces. So you guys did your homework, which is great. Um, my question to you is this is applicable in a very open space environment, what's gonna happen when we have the challenges regarding uh, our locations such as restaurants and bars, the ones that already have pre-existing pre infrastructure? You know, how will this uh, be uh, applied or is it applicable in those types of venues? It is because um, as we said, it's foldable. So it allows, it can easily be stored in the storage area of the restaurant as well. Uh, it, it can be, so we can take the dimensions of the tables and uh, um, uh, re-alter the dimensions in order to fit um, the tables of a restaurant. But however, this was actually calculated, that, Usha, if you can give us the, get us the appendix, it was calculated for an average size table in a restaurant and uh, chairs accommodating the height of a person. So this is something uh, that we, we, we took into account while designing it. Uh, yes, th that's it. So th this, these were the dimensions used and the calculations. Uh, that's how we got the actual dimension. Yeah. And I also want to add to Amina's answer um, because I think there's uh, some kind of confusion. Cube then does not actually have the furniture inside it. It's just a modular kind of walls that can go on whichever type of furniture the restaurant has. Okay. Okay. So it goes around it. So it basically creates like a, literally like a dynamic cubicle that is enclosed. So you basically, you guys basically created a, you know, a pop-up phone booth that just goes around encasing an actual, that's interesting. That, uh, that is a little more mind blowing, I think from, from. With, with one side that can actually be uh, either opened or closed to take uh, into account the fact that um, the schedules might probably be different every day. So one day you might have lots of uh, individuals working in smaller spaces and other days you might have uh, people who need meeting rooms. So that opening of one side will enable you to stack them together without actually adding the extra cost of having a different kind of cubicle that mm -hmm. will, for instance, cater for a meeting and one that could cater for individuals and so on. Very cool. Uh, uh, this is Vignesh. Uh, thank you, guys. It was a very nice presentation. Uh, just wanted to uh, g uh, get into the financials a little bit. Uh, when you guys spoke about promotions on the social media and uh, digital media, like uh, what kind of uh, things are you guys going to do? And uh, uh, I think uh, if I'm not wrong, you guys showed that you had like 15% uh, spending plan, something like that. Can you guys explain that? Um, okay, so Usha, if you can go to the um, pro forma um, income statement that's in the appendix that has all the details we might need. Okay, so basically uh, for the whole cost, we, we for the manufacturing cost first, we uh, did that on a component by component basis. So, uh, and that's the result. However, for the marketing, we uh, kept it constant at 15% of the revenues. 
uh, because that's the industry average as per our research. And um, the kind of marketing we mean is marketing through the social uh, media platforms uh, because we're targeting digital nomads at the end of the day. And also the ones that have to do with promotions for um, loyal customers and so on. So it's not all digital marketing. However, the majority of it would go to digital marketing. Yeah. Do you guys have a breakup? Excuse me? For the marketing costs in specific? Yes. Uh, I'm um, sorry, could you repeat your question? Sorry, do you guys have a breakup of all the marketing activities that you guys are doing? For, for the marketing costs in specific, we don't. However, we use the industry average to have a, a reliable like uh, percentage. Okay, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, uh, guys. Uh, Sebastian here. I have, well, just we'll sell that slide there for just for a moment. Uh, the pro forma income segment. Just first question that when I saw this, is there any reason why uh, the sales almost quadruple between 2022 and 2023? What's the assumption there? First? So that's the, yeah, that's like a base scenario that we calculated based on the, uh, uh, the, the development of the pandemic and the rollout of the vaccine. So the main reason is that uh, that doesn't happen only in the cost, by the way, it's also in the revenues. But the main reason for that is that we assume that for the entire year of 2021 20, and 2022, we'll be using uh, uh, lower uh, like capacity, capacities as explained by Rick Dunn as compared to the normal situation. And we also reduced the utilization because we thought even if work then reduces the capacity, the customers would not come a lot in those years. But for 2023, we uh, used half of the year with the normal capacity and utilization and half of it with uh, the corona situation. And then for the rest of the model, we assumed that there will be no more pandemic, hopefully, and we will go back to normal operating levels. Yeah, hopefully we get there soon. And what, one more question, if I'm asked, you you, uh, you talk about uh, uh, the the market share that you uh, you will grab from the competition that are kind of falling away. And uh, do you have any strategy, or what's the probably tying up to the question from uh, uh, from the previous question? Like, what's the marketing to get that? And do you have any percentage um, kind of forecast of how much you can get from those other comp competitors? Um, sure. So I'd love to answer that question for you. So basically, uh, work done's approach is so much more different than other competitors' approaches, especially uh, the market share that we want to grab in Phoenix, Milwaukee, New York City, in, in the United States. They don't uh, necessarily rely on the same approach uh, on uh, partnering with locals. So that would definitely be our main strategy and also use uh, like up our marketing game uh, in those when we're trying to panic those uh, those areas uh, in terms of digital marketing, uh, for example, sending out newsletters to companies uh, in New York City and um, stuff like that. So basically, that's how we would uh, go about uh, grabbing that market share because it's already it's already being grabbed by other competitors because those companies are not doing well when it comes to the COVID pandemic. Awesome. I have a question for you guys. Okay, classic four to five horses. Or uh, so what's what's the what's the, the supplier situation for? We're gonna talk. I'm gonna go back to the cube den here. <clears throat> um, well, first of all, I also like that you guys address the app. It, it's pretty neat that it can. It, it's uh, it's a it's a very good <clears throat> um, feature to have. Uh, I like the contact list as well. It's very streamlined. I want to know a little about about sourcing. So one. Um, you know, what's the cost to develop the app to basically sourcing the parts and getting this thing manufactured and created for us? Um, you know, where are we getting them from? You know, who's the supplier? How is it feasible? Is it how long does it take to get them here from setup? Uh, you know, from, from when we make an order to when we get it actually in our location? Uh, were you guys able to address those or kind of figure out what maybe the supply chain side of thing would be in terms of getting these uh, cube dens? Uh, you know, wheels up. Uh, so we did not get like the, the actual suppliers that work done would be dealing with because uh, uh, that was not like uh, at the core of it, but we did do some decisions pertaining to the supply chain. So uh, one major decision was the use of uh, redwood instead of uh, woods because um, first it would be more environmentally friendly. And then uh, there's also the fact that during the past year or maybe more than a year, 
the wood prices in Canada were always rising. So we figured out that the suppliers would not be able, maybe it's because of the pandemic and maybe because of its, uh, of its other uh, like factors, but suppliers won't just magically drop their prices uh, overnight. So we decided to use another material that would allow uh, work done to actually take this solution into market should they decide to do so. Uh, so that was one of the decisions. And then we made sure that all the materials we're using can actually be produced and are produced in Canada. So that means that we're going to have local sourcing, which again has a lower carbon footprint and also mm -hmm. makes the operations a lot easier. So these were the two elements we, we made sure that we have. Can you guys walk me through a bit about the, the app, uh, just as a, the, the QDEN app? Yes, sure. Usha, can you get the slide, please? Thanks. Yes, so as mentioned here, so uh, basically uh, these are the main features of our app. Um, it has the, the visual booking calendar to give the bird's eye uh, look of uh, the reservations. And it's both easier for people to have the push notifications with the reminders. It uh, eliminates any conflicts that could happen. But there's also another uh, kind of like a view for the moderators who are able to check who accessed which rooms and in order for it to them for, to intervene in case of any emergencies uh, which yeah which was mentioned here in the third point so yeah basically two uh, views a user view and a moderator view for the app uh, mm -hmm. in order to ensure like seamless communication cool thank you uh, one one question here is: that, Can you show your pricing structure as well as uh, the uh, uh, the number of customers acquisition that happens over the next four four five years? Mm -hmm. uh, your okay, pricing so structure to the customers. Uh, the pricing of uh, the work done spaces, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, if you can. We can. We did not actually change the pricing. However, uh, we made sure that it is. If it's nine point nine nine past day or ninety nine point ninety nine uh, as they currently are, they would actually be uh, on, on on par with the with the industry. Not actually on par. It would, would fulfill the target of work then of having uh, the sixty percent difference. So we decided that if it actually works, then we do not uh, need to change it. However, this will squeeze the, the margins of work them for a little bit. Uh, but the extra cost, as you can see, like it's, it's 1300 per, per, per one unit. So if, 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 the, if the unit is actually going to be used in different locations for a longer time, then this doesn't really put a lot of pressure on, uh, on, the, on the margin scene. What was the other question? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to see the customer acquisition for the next four or five years. Uh, what do you mean to customer acquisition in terms of like their, their so, price? Yeah, their the number of uh, workspaces that you are able to sell to uh, customers okay. to make the uh, revenue. Okay, so... Um, Usha, uh, so you, 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 you uh, your, the by the third year, uh, if you go to your financials, uh, by the third year. Yeah, so you're reaching uh, almost a hundred million dollar in revenue during 2023, right? So how many workspaces would you be selling to uh, ensure how many customers or uh, how are you going to reach this uh, number of uh, uh, yeah. revenue? So if you can go to the assumptions uh, uh, table, uh, we actually, um, okay, so what we did is that we uh, had a number of cube dance per location. Uh, so it was a factor of the number of locations that work then operates and then the number of cube dance that can be fit into each location and uh, the, uh, the number of customers uh, finally. So that was, uh, these were the assumptions. So. Uh, we first assumed that uh, Cube Dan was going to have uh, the uh, like to add uh, three locations per year since they're currently uh, they currently only have four and they're in the process of adding other sets. Uh, so that's the assumption we need pertaining to the locations. And then we, uh, based on the dimensions that uh, we we developed, we were able to compute that ten Cube Dan's would fit into each. Uh, location and we use the average uh, area of uh, both locations that were provided in the case by work done. 
So we used the average of them and we came to the conclusion that we can fit 10 cube dams. And if we say that, the, you know, we said that if the corona continues for, um, for longer, then we can say that the capacity, uh, including corona, mm -hmm. would only be two people in each cube dam. So that gives us 20 people. And then if it's in normal situations, it would be 40. And then we, uh, we assumed that that was, of course, per day. And then this number of people, we, uh, we used actually a, a utilization factor, the fault in the fault in this table. Uh, but we, we used different utilizations uh, for, the, for the pandemic and post-pandemic. We used 65% and 25% respectively. Um, and then, yeah, finally, these are all per day. So we analyzed that based on the annual working days in Canada and multiplied it by the the current prices of uh, work done, as mentioned earlier. Okay, thank you. Perfect, guys. Um, that was great, great presentation to the presenters and thank you judges, those are really great questions. Um, right now we're gonna go into the deliberation phase. Um, basically, my colleague Ragna is going to assign everybody to a breakout room, the judges to one and uh, the participants to another one and the judges are going to talk about the performance. And uh, yeah, basically when the system asks, just click on join now. Sounds good. Okay, thank you so much, been a great pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Hey, Rana. Hey, they're done? Yes. Okay. Can you uh, close, just click on the close all rooms from breakout room? Really, they can. Uh... Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Right. All right, everybody's back. Now uh, we're gonna have the judges to give some feedback on the performance of the presentation. Fire it away. All right. Go, I'll, I'll, jump, I'll jump in. Um, okay, cool. Well, listen, great creativity on the engineering side. I think it was very, very, I like that you, know, you recognize the importance of being sustainable through all the little touch points in your presentation in terms of your proposal. Cube Den is very interesting, very smart to think that the encasing around the table. So now you're, you're complementing the pre-existing infrastructure instead of moving things and taking things away because we don't want to be, you know, adding or, or creating more, you know, taxing, uh, you know, build outs for these spaces when we're supposed to be repurposing. So by adding a very sustainable kind of complementary encasing around the table to provide the better customer experience, that was great, solid work. Um, I would say would have loved to have seen a little more uh, information regarding the execution of the marketing things. Um, I think that you guys did a great job in terms of discussing how your, you know, the, 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 the ambition is to go global, but you guys do recognize it's very important to think local as well, uh, or rather act local in the sense that you guys did talk about local competitors. You guys did talk about the neighborhoods element of things. Uh, would have liked to have seen a little more um, business execution in terms of the specifics of the marketing. Um, but you know, I, I think you guys did a great job. I think, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a challenge. It's not an easy, uh, easy task. It's a, and I imagine it's a very challenging case, but I think you guys worked well with what you had. Uh, so just to jump in on a few things, uh, I, 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 so the gurus is like nothing but a teacher. Uh, so you taught us a lot of stuff. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was very impressed on the engineering side. You guys focused uh, mainly on it. Uh, as uh, as Stephen already said, like uh, you, uh, the ideas on uh, on the uh, uh, business side was not uh, clearly implementable. So that was one thing that uh, that we found was lagging. Uh, another thing that I would uh, recommend uh, is that uh, like the, your cost structures and your revenue and has to be like more aligned. Uh, and we found it like to be over optimistic on your uh, revenue projections. So that was one thing that I would I would recommend you to look at. If I might interrupt, I'm so sorry. Um, we wanted to show you uh, our revenue calculation because we did it. Yeah, it's our, it wasn't added into our presentation, but this is our Excel sheet. It has like the monthly membership, the, the okay. day pass, look, the, it's a detailed revenue calculation. That's how we got our numbers. So that way you can link between our pro okay. forma and that. Understood. Thank you. Got it. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I'll stop my share. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I'm just going to time it. We have a few minutes left on that. So great presentation. Honestly, that's what I was talking with the, the, the other judge. I'm like, gosh, that must be so stressful with the COVID and uh, doing all of this from home. That must be a good experience for you guys, especially I'm working and doing all of this from home and uh, coordinating everything is so difficult, even in, in my own work. So props to you. Um, and as I say, I think engineering, that's what I was the most impressed, to be honest. I think we all have the same comments. This is why I really love that you touch uh, on all the little region in Montreal. So that this town, uh, Quebec, and that you so went, uh, I'll call it, I don't know, globally and Phoenix and then that other place. I really love that. Um, and the, the only place, person that would have been a little bit more interested is how to just implement those and execute, execute on, on that. Uh, but beside that, good, uh, good job. Uh, ladies, is it all ladies? One, two, all ladies, yeah. All it's ladies, all there you ladies. go. I'm like, oh. is it all ladies? I don't want to say guys. I'm like, I don't see ladies. So good job, ladies, on that one. Just a quick comment. I had four uh, 
men the last time I came and this time it turned out to be four ladies. So yeah. this is how uh, the comp internal competition brought them. Awesome. I love that. I love that it's all ladies, to be honest. And it's so refreshing to see. And I agree. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank for you. all your feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. Same to you, guys. Thank you. Have a lovely Thanks. day. Thank we'll you. Like yeah, we'll celebrate. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. We'll celebrate. Thank you. You also have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. And uh, how about us? Do we stay here? Or are we yes. like okay, in our so, room? What's happening? Um, okay, so everybody's going to stay here in the main room. And then the judges, you guys um, right now, please input the score. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I just have one more question for you guys. Because um, um, we're also doing a little count contest for um, the best speaker. Oh, um, which... We can do that um, in the deliberation room, uh, just because it's uh, live. So uh, if you guys can all just enter the deliberation room, and then I'm going to uh, get in the new team for the second presentation. Got it. All right. I'll bring you guys back when it's time. Perfect. Thank you. I'm not sure if they're in the deliberation room. No. We're still here. Um, yeah. <laughs> who has to create the room? That's the thing. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. Still here. Someone, uh, we're still alive. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just need guys. someone to create that room. Okay. I, um, I think if you. Um... Okay. Never mind. Ran is doing it. Cool. Just give me a second. I'll be right back. Can we just put it for more than 10 seconds? It was quite fast. Um, Rana? Yes, I'm so sorry because <laughs> something is happening and I'm trying to figure it out. Okay. Um, no rush. I'm going to press on open all rooms so everybody is going to be invited to the. Never mind, she did it. Rignesh, did you um, did you get the invitation to the breakout room? Hello.
Pignesh, can you hear us? I know he's in the deliberation room. I'm gonna uh, admit the the next team. Perfect. This is okay. Breakout rooms are very confusing. Hi, everyone. How are y'all feeling? Good. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, very good. Awesome. You guys are the explorers, right? Yes, I'm changing my name right now. Yeah, sorry. Every time we rejoin it, we have to change our name. <laughs> it's okay. Take your time. You still have about five minutes left. Everybody's uh, confident today? Yeah. Definitely a bit tired, but we're going to get all that energy out there. <laughs> nice. Um, the judges are just in the breakout room finishing um, evaluation for the last team. So um, by the time they come back, we should be good to go. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Should we just stay in this room? We're not going to be in the breakout room for the presentation. Board. Oh, sorry. Sorry? Will we just stay in this room for the presentation and we don't go to a breakout room? Mm, basically, what's going to happen is that you guys are going to present here um, and I'm going to be the timekeeper. I'm going to flash a little card for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, and 1 minute like this. So make sure you're able to see my face. Um, and after that, you guys are going to go to a separate breakout room and the judges too. Um, and there the judges are going to talk about evaluation and then you guys are going to um, talk among yourself. And after that, we're gonna have 10 minutes of feedback and that's about it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Francis, previously coaches have been able to watch other teams give their presentations. Is that gonna happen again this year? Pardon? Are coaches able to watch other teams present? That is a very good question. Rana, do you have any idea? <laughs> yes. Um, we, we Previously, we've been, uh, coaches have been able to watch other presentations, but just because this year it's online, uh, we're also going to be broadcasting uh, all presentations and I'm going to be sending out the links um, by tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, so you're going to be able to watch other presentations as well. Perfect, thanks. No problem. Did time go fast, team? Yes, very fast. <laughs> Ken, I like your um, very intricate pendant you have. Yeah, you got to represent, right? Uh, you know, the t-shirt doesn't exactly fit the way, you know, it's impossible to guess your size sometimes. And uh, I guess a little bit too small. Oh. Otherwise you'd be seeing that, I mean, <laughs> full on Engcom regalia. I, I can get my hat if you'd like, really complete for. Thank you, Rana, for sending that stuff. Um, I don't, I didn't get a swag bag last year. I arrived a bit late to the cocktail hour. Uh, oh, really? Was this year's stuff comparable to what you've given in the past? Yes, uh, but we, we we introduced a lot of new uh, Enchcom, Enchcom like logo merch. Uh, usually we have like our sponsors give out mugs and you know whatnot. Uh, but this year we wanted it to be like a lot of just Enchcom, purely Enchcom merch. Right, my uh, my kids love the logos. Those um, the circles went straight under their laptops. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have an idea how many more years you're going to be running Engcom? Uh, this is my last year. 
what? Yeah. Can't let you go. Are you graduating? And I'm not graduating, but you know, time for a a new start. Pass the torch. Let somebody else have the chance. Yeah, exactly. But I wish we were all in person. It's 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 very uh, it's a whole different experience. So. Sure. Well, we're still grateful that we were able to do it, uh, even if the circumstances are a little different. It's great to keep it going. Thank you. Us as well. Explorers, what did you do with your tenants? I have mine um, actually in my, my dorm room. My sweet mates liked it as well. So we have it up. <laughs> yeah, I have mine. I live, I live in an apartment, so I have mine um, downstairs. But I guess I could put it in my room too. <laughs> Get extra my, points. My roommates Ronna, correct me it. if I'm wrong. Uh, extra points for having an income stuff in the background. Yeah, <laughs> can I go hang it up back there? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I read that in the rules somewhere. I can take mine out. Let's we'll see. Ugh. I did put up on my wall, but I'm in like at school now, so it's not at the wall. Ellen, there how did that go. work out? Are you in a good space? It has really good. I went to the Sam's uh, second service and they let me in. At least like the, the office space is really nice. Thank you so much, Ken. My pleasure, of course. I'm sorry that there was a hiccup with getting you there first thing. That, um, yeah, oh, it's totally never. Thank you. Is that okay? I keep going here tomorrow. Also Thursday. Yeah, yeah they, they understand it's for the whole week. Thank you very much. Of course. You might want to send, is it Rahel, I think is her name. Maybe just send her a note to confirm okay. that you can get in tomorrow. I'll do that like after the presentation by tonight. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Is everybody else okay in terms of Wi-Fi connectivity? Do we need to get any other rooms? Yep. So there'll be a Q&A after our presentation again, correct? Okay, awesome. Did you guys see that? It says it's live on YouTube, right? It's not just, okay, you guys finally believe me. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I was like, maybe I shouldn't be putting chapstick on. <laughs> That's funny. So cool. I can't tell my roommate to watch. <laughs> Thomas Chittenden always um, asks if he can watch or Ian wants the link. So um, others will be interested for sure. No pressure. Hello. Hi there. Hi there. How you guys doing? Great. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Nice to see you guys. All right, perfect. Now that all the judges are back, I believe. Yes, so um, you guys can start to present, um, share your screen and whenever you're ready. Is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to listen to our presentation today. My name is Risa Repetto. My name is Molly Feeney. My name is Olga Kopienko. My name is Helen Wong. And now Molly is going to speak about the background of the case. Thank you, Risa. Currently, Work Den is following an innovative approach to shared office space. Working with local partners, unused space now has function, helping the local economy and community morale. Additionally, repurposing the pre-existing space is helping sustainability efforts by minimizing teardown construction and also maintaining the charm that already exists in the different buildings. Finally, following a primarily business-to-business -business strategy, worked and attracts clients on a company-wide scale rather than individual business people. Thank you, Molly. So for our recommendations, it is important for us to provide a comfortable and productive environment, uniform amenities among all locations, price points for everyone's needs, and finally, a modern approach to doing business. Next, Molly will talk about the proposed membership options. 
Thank you, Olga. We want to build upon the different workspace offer, workspaces offered by Workden by proposing a tiered system for reserving office space. Level one includes the basic desk setup, a communal space equipped with a touch control light and outlet for each station, and level three comes with a private soundproof room. Level two combines both of these by offering half the day in private and half the day in the lounge. Of course, all of our amenities are available on all three levels, including complimentary Starbucks coffee, free printing and scanning, and access to collaborative working lounges, as well as um, disinfecting wipes and hand sanitizer due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The pricing options for each level reflect the current rates offered by Workden, but raised slightly to account for the additional improvements that we recommend adopting. The near future will include level three rooms offered at level two rates due to the coronavirus pandemic, but will return to normal, normal when things are more under control. Workden would also not be worked in without complimentary coffee and tea. The Starbucks serenade machine can dispense hot or iced coffee, hot cocoa, or Tazo chai tea at the touch of a button. We believe that small details like this set worked in apart from the rest and we will continue to attract more clients. Olga, will you continue? Thank you, Molly. So additionally, all locations will include a printer with scanning and photocopying options, which is complimentary to our all, all worked in users. Um, additionally, our solution for minimizing background noise um, and creating privacy uh, for all users is gonna be a portable soundproof divider wall. And so the soundproof panels will be attached to the exterior of the divider panels in the color scheme of the company with the Workden logo as seen on the right. And then the artificial box wood will be on the interior to create a welcoming, intimate and productive environment. The soundproof panels themselves are made from a blend of recycled cotton and cellulose, most of which comes from post-consumer newspapers. Additionally, the panels are fire rated, non-toxic, non-carcinogenic, and use 20% of the energy required to, required to make fiberglass. So therefore it is an environmentally clean option. The total cost per eight foot wall is $762. Next, Helen will talk about the features of each level workplace. Thank you, Olga. To make sure the customers have comfortable uh, working experience once we worked in and for the worked in brand to flourish, we improve the workspace to, uh, to a comfy zone with worked in branded. For the level one members, they are able to use the business lounge uh, where it includes tables and workspaces. A large work table with the branded lamps and all light systems, chairs with memorable form and be able to adjust height. The total cost per table would be around uh, four six dollars and one table houses with four workstations. For the level three members, they are able to have a private room with memory both uh, form and height adjustable chairs, L-shaped office desk with uh, all light system, and a lamp with USB charging port, which can hold a wireless charging lamp, and three lighting modes with five uh, brightness levels and touching uh, control adjustable. The total estimated cost would be around um, $165. Next, I will pass the floor to Olga about talking about daily implementation plan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Helen. So for the initial setup of the location, the setup for a given location requires receiving the printer and coffee machine, as well as setting up the divider wall with the greenery and soundproof panels, which happens one time. After that, for every day, uh, the dividers will need to be set up in the configuration to include all level spaces with chairs, tables, lamps, and the coffee machine and printer will need to be moved out to the common area on a rolling table. At the end of each day, all the materials will be put into storage. Briefly, the potential technical risks include power failure, which would result in outlets and tables not working. And then also if workers aren't present, then the setup cannot be moved. And then finally, if Wi-Fi fails, then that fails. So all these technical risks would affect a business day and the user's experience. Next, Risa will talk about short-term and long-term solutions. Thank you, Olga. We will now discuss catering to the future for both short and long-term solutions. For the short term, we thought it could be a great idea to utilize financially struggling malls and department stores. 
This will provide more opportunities to socially distance and accommodate for more people than our current facilities can allow with COVID-19 protocols. For the long run, utilizing these buildings will allow larger groups of discussions and even the possibility of conference rooms. All of these facilities will have standard branding with low operating costs. This is important as many companies travel for business and it is important for all operations to be consistent with one another. Now Helen is going to talk about the blueprints for the mall and department store, the department stores. <laughs> Thank you, Risa. Here's the blueprint layout of the future mall store. We provide two workspace with eight by 21 feet area with printer and coffee machine on the side, a collaborative office space on the other side for level one members and provide a workspace with eight by eight feet size for level three members. So this is basically our engineer inner structure design, which is providing a positive and comfortable experience for our customers. So next I will pass the floor to Molly and talk about risk and opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. In regard to risks, standardized, standardizing components of the working environment is difficult when accounting for different customer preferences influenced by geographics. However, Workden provides con conven convenience and comfort that will provide a productive work environment for anybody. Now we will move on to our marketing analysis, beginning with Target Market. This company primarily targets companies who do not have access to permanent office buildings. Workden provides all the same experiences in all locations, which allows for consistent and sustainable working conditions for the consumers. This is important when companies are traveling both domestically and internationally, as well as having a low cost quality work environment is important. Risa, will you continue our market analysis? Yes, thank you, Molly. I will now be discussing our positioning strategy. Having three levels allows us to serve three different parts of the market. Level one accommodates those who want to work in a larger group setting. This is great for collaboration and per perfect for a customer who doesn't want to spend a lot of money. Level two provides flexibility for those individuals who are willing to pay just a bit more to satisfy their needs. This gives them the opportunity for a secluded workspace if it's necessary. Level three is the highest price segment who is willing to pay the most money in order to get their exact needed working conditions. I will now talk about the perceptual map, which is showing our competitors placed next to ourselves. On this map, it compares quality with cost. As you can see, the level one, two, and three are placed according to their price and the quality that's associated with them. Workdown's prices are inclusive of renting individual rooms where our competitor IWG are not. This makes our product more affordable while still being of very high quality. IWG is included in this map as it is one of Workdown's largest competitors. I will now be discussing their our competitive advantage and unique selling point. A unique selling point of Workden is their low cost compared to competitors. This allows consumers to save almost 60 to 80% on these spaces. Social and community benefits are important to Workden and are showed by reusing assets and not wasting any material. They also bring traffic to local businesses, which overall maximizes community space in the surrounding area. These are all unique selling points with which gives them a competitive advantage compared to their competitors. We will now be discussing the triple bottom line. People, profit, and planet are all important to work done. By reusing these assets and utilizing community space, they're being sustainable and reducing waste by maximizing these resources. This overall has a positive effect on the environment. They provide traffic to local businesses by being located in very communal areas, and it provides business to local shops and restaurants in the community. This overall is boosting the economy. They are profitable as they adhere to consumer preferences and have relatively low operating costs. We're now gonna get into the consistent, consistency with their branding. So these new changes recommended are consistent with their triple bottom line. No changes would ever be implemented if they didn't overall have a positive impact on the company and consumers. The branding of this company is consistent and it is expected that these changes overall will make a positive impact on both the consumers and overall profitability of this company. Now Molly is going to talk about the financial analysis. Thank you, Risa. Weighing the costs and benefits of, add, of adding changes to the company, we believe that the benefits prevail. Although there is a high cost to constructing a new workspace and an increase in monthly expenses, the clients can retrieve higher values in Workden and we, they will also see a higher return on their investment. 
Viewing both, both fixed and variable costs, the new additions has a steep price. However, as shown on the next slide, the break-even point is very attainable. For level one workspaces, upgrade costs total to $1,840. Each workspace can house four workers, meaning that 16 total clients can be seated at the socially distanced spaces. 16 monthly payments for level one workspaces comes out to be $1,760, meaning that after one month of fully booked level one spaces, all renovations will be paid. As for level three, with the same calculations of monthly subscriptions, it would take about seven months to fully pay off renovations. Once level two subscriptions are factored in, we believe that Workdown will be turning a high profit in the first few months of new operations. Thank you so much, and we'll be taking questions now. All right, I, I guess I'll jump in. Um, <clears throat> well, thanks guys. Great, uh, great presentation. Uh, I know it's pretty challenging to do this in general, and you add a layer of complexity with Zoom and the global pandemic. So, uh, you know, hats off to you guys. Um, so I'm Reggie, I'm the co-founder of Workden. So I'm to be talking directly with you guys. Um, so my question for you guys is power supply. Can we talk a bit about that? So, you know, we're setting up the blueprint. You, I love that you guys did the blueprint. It's very interesting. It's great. Uh, bird's eye view on how to set it up. So we talked about, you know, the, the panels. Very interesting with the soundproof panels. Um, and I like that you guys touch on the sustainability side of thing. Can we discuss accessibility for workstations to power supply? Yes, hi. So I could take this one over. So cool. if we go back to, let's see which slide we should do. Um, honestly, oh wait, we don't even need to go back. So the intention was for every, so like the lamps that we wanted to use, they mm -hmm. have like, they have USB um, ports, you know, for charging small devices. So that's, that was a big thing that we wanted to include for accessibility. Um, that, as well as the table in the higher levels, those will be, um, well, so that there would be some wiring required to ensure that there is ample power for all. Um, specifically with the blueprint, because it is in a, like a department store kind of layout, there is, uh, it is a lot easier to be, like to create the design for, to allow for um, all like the, um, like the extension cords and powers to connect to those tables. Um, and then also power the lights. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, so uh, this is Vignesh. Uh, just wanted to ask you a few things on how you are going to target. Uh, can you can you explain it? Uh, the cost involved in targeting new customers. Um, when targeting new customers. We would primarily be focusing on people who have been stuck in their houses based on the COVID-19 pandemic, unable to go into their office. And we believe that we provide um, great alternatives and solutions for Workden to implement to attract these new, these new clients um, by creating an inviting and warm atmosphere. It is something that will cater to a lot of people and draw a lot of more um, business in. Uh, yes, but how are you going to target them and what are the costs involved in it? Like, are you going to use any uh, social media or? Yes, we would obviously like, put things on social media, advertise um, on TV, Instagram ads, Facebook ads. Um, that would account for some financial planning that we did not account for. Um, however, it would be something that we would look into in the future. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Seb here. I had a quick question on the, um, uh, I love, first of all, the idea of going in the, the malls are struggling. I think they need the cash flow. And if uh, uh, the company can go there and bring that kind of flow of clients in there, I think it's a good idea. Uh, did you find any malls that kind of have that needs uh, across Montreal or Quebec that can be targeted or any um, spaces in mind? 
I can take this question. So we didn't look into the exact um, malls in that local area. However, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that a lot of businesses are struggling. So we do assume that there will be places for us to move into in terms of department stores, in terms of maybe if it's even a local um, store or something like that, that has the capacity to hold um, this sort of business. Um, but our main thinking was because of the financial struggle that many people and businesses are feeling because of the pandemic because of a loss of sales, um, we thought that this could be a possible move there. However, we will have to look at the specific locations and the specific malls um, and department stores in that area, which would be suited for this kind of move. But that is a great question um, for those next steps. That's definitely something that we will consider. Let's see, to just add quickly to that. <clears throat> so, yeah, no, I agree with Seb. It's, it's interesting that you, you know, like if I can help we're going to help all struggling businesses we would. And, you know, the, the reality is that retail stores were just the trend of, of, of brick and mortar uh, companies and the, the trend of online e-commerce. It, it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of soon to be vacant, empty real estate. And it'd be nice to give them a new life. So what I want to ask, and I'm not sure if you, you mentioned this um, earlier on, we can actually go back to that slide if, if you want, but the department store. So are these locations going to be ultimately vacant or will they be, uh, you know, sectioned off for work then while the other core business activities are still happening? And if so, what's the customer flow? Do we have, you know, work then people on one side and then the other side of maybe the dividers, for example, are people shopping uh, or is it really just these are unleased, uh, you know, vacant, no tenant sections in a mall that are just you know the landlords are struggling to find someone who could just you know open up shops or basically turn it into a co-working space just want to um, know exactly what the what the the goal the uh, the drive behind that idea was um ideally we would try to find um empty locations that way we would not have to keep setting up taking down spaces however it would be a case-by-case -case basis um if if certain retailer brick and mortar store was really interested in having work to come in, we will be work, be able to work with them. Um, however, the easy solution would be vacant, able to be filled by work. Yeah, I can definitely step in um, after Molly as well. Um, it's exactly as she said, a case by case basis. So say there's this huge department store, really can't afford their rent, and they want to kind of split the space half and half. Um, I think that could be a great possibility as well, just because then we wouldn't be paying as much money for such a large space. And then also the customer flow would be working really well, because people could be working um, with worked in in our space. And then also, it would be bringing business to that whatever department store or, or local business that it is. So that could be a really nice model as well, but it definitely is a case by case basis, depending on um, what buildings are open, who's struggling, things like that. So definitely those next steps are, are where we would be considering those sorts of questions. If I may add to that, the reality of work then is that we have two customers to keep really, really happy. It's the actual user and it's our hosts, our host partners. Who would be our partner in this uh, scenario? Are we working with real estate, um, you know, the owner of that mall, and that we're making an arrangement? Um, if so, what is the arrangement? Um, is it are we engaging in a lease? Or are we uh, basically just filling the void until they find a more long term tenant? If the if that is the case, which is which is a very viable option as well, we engage in a short term, you know, uh, mini rental until they kind of get a more you know, because let's, you know, without very having a, de a deep knowledge of, of the real estate um, industry, uh, but it is typically more preferred that a, that a landlord would lease their, uh, their, their property on a long-term lease. So what will happen to all the infrastructure that we have in place if we have to uh, pick up and, and just go somewhere else, if we get kind of booted out? I think initially uh, we would be working on a sublease type situation, just kind of going and filling in where landlords need somebody to cover just for a few weeks, a month, and then seeing how that works out, maybe moving in full time. But something that we did design in our um, soundproof walls, which I'll go to this slide, mm -hmm. although it is um, a wall, it is able to fold, it is on hinges. And then we also thought that um, it would have magnets that could just clip and it would just 
create a structure. That way it's easy to just fold back up, put away, move to wherever it needs to go. So even if it was a short-term situation, it would be an easy, an easy move to wherever work you needed to go. Cool. I can add a quick line. There was um, in our original uh, brainstorming process with the uh, with the malls with like we were really thinking this would be like a like a short term solution for a long term problem with like you were saying with uh, uh, a lot of uh, like in person like commerce going out of business and mm -hmm. so we also did plan for potential leases working with the um, the malls themselves. I know originally, like originally, like with the with, with restaurants, we're, we are working with small scale uh, businesses, but we also were considering um, creating these like solutions for both parties. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Uh, just to uh, uh, ask you one more thing about the financials, uh, I like your membership options and uh, your break even analysis. Uh, can you give me a clear path, like where will, will we be in three years time? What kind of a revenue we would be making? Um, I think that down the line, obviously right now, we said that we would be charging level three workspaces at level two prices, just to kind of give, give people um, more flexibility with lower sales, lower pay until COVID is more under control and salaries come back up, hopefully. Um, but down the line, once everything is paid off, it would just be a maintenance. So if I go back to my cost analysis, <coughs> excuse me, after the initial $9,000 fixed costs per location, it would just be, you know, $1,500 estimated um, overhead and then 89 for the coffee machine. So I think it would be a very viable option down the road to just keep all these improvements in place and then just take whatever new variable costs arise month by month. Thank you. Also, just to add off of Molly's point pretty quickly, um, we do expect that many consumers or, or many potential clients will be really appreciative of this model just because after everyone has been on this at-home order and is working from home, we really think that it's going to be preferred to, to go into these offices. If, say, the company you're working for doesn't have actual office buildings, um, many people themselves will go and seek out these kinds of um, working conditions just because many people do want to get out of their houses and, and want that working environment just because it's been lacking so much for the past um, almost year now, which is kind of crazy to think. So we believe that it's a very up and coming market, um, which is why in the long term, it could be a possible solution to expand these places into the, the department stores and, and things as we mentioned. So we expect it to do well in the long run in the long run. Thank you. And one last question. I think we have probably three minutes left, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think there's a few competitor in this industry or in this market that are kind of falling apart or uh, probably won't be able to survive uh, in the next few months. Is there any insight on how we can uh, kind of grab those clients? And if so, do we know how much of the client we can grab in the market share, please? Um, well, we do believe that since we offer similar qualities at lower prices, we would be able to grab any clients that are unhappy with the current um, working condition that they are in, in, the, in our competitors' um, spaces. So I think it is very possible for us to attract new clients from other companies just based on the fact that we have similar quality at lower prices. Yes, and also just to input after Molly as well, um, a lot of our competitors do not offer the in their their complete price um, to rent individual rooms, which is something that we considered in our original pricing of the three different levels. So that does give us kind of that a little advantage just because right off the bat, our consumers are knowing that they're going to have access to those individual rooms to have those private conversations, noise canceling, all of that. Um, so that's preferred so then you know that there aren't all these extra costs which are going to be having to be paid um, up front everything is included if that's the package they choose to go with so that's why the quality is still there everything is still the same but that price is lower which is why we think that it's going to attract more of these consumers and, and potential clients awesome 
Well, good stuff, guys. I mean, uh, I, I'm good for questions. How about, how about uh, Seb and Inesh? I'm good. Oh, Thank you. Thank cool. you so much. We appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well done. All right. If um, everybody is um, out of questions, we're going to enter the deliberation phase. And Rana is going to assign everybody into uh, the breakout room um, for the participants. And as for the judges, you can simply just click on the breakout rooms option at the bottom of your screen. If that doesn't exist, click on the more part. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Everything okay there, Reggie? Yeah, I'm looking for that breakout thing. I don't see it. Yeah. Like, do you do you see a, a more option with three dots? Yes, got it. See okay. you later. Yeah. Hey, Rana. Hi. I'm gonna join with the the judges. Uh, yeah, timekeeper. So Francis, can you go with them? And Rana, can you assign me in the with the judges? I just need to double check for scoring. Okay.
Are we alone? Uh, looks like it. Oh, oh, here we go. The Explorers. Hi. Great name. Great name. All right, I'm just uh, checking if everybody is back. Yes. And uh, Vignesh is going to come back in uh, about five minutes. Um, and right now, the judges will give you guys, uh, the presenters, some feedback on the presentation. And yeah, take it away. Cool. Sad, but you know, if you want to start the last one, you go ahead if you want. No, no, kick it off. It's All right. Up. So, um, well, guys, thanks. You know, look, uh, we mentioned before, it's, it's, it's not, uh, this is not an easy task in general, you know, add a layer complexity to zoom and stuff on it. But I think uh, you guys did great in terms of um, what you could in six hours. So kudos to you. Um, so I think, all right. So overall, I think you guys uh, were brave and you, you jumped into a sector, uh, the, 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 the malls and the vacant uh, department stores. That was a big, that was a, that was a big, that was a big challenge. That was, that was brave. So I, I like that you guys tackled that. Um, so I think it was great, you know, it was not easy feat, but I think it may have been to the detrimize of going into detail in terms of how to execute. I think that, um, you know, when, but you know, that, that's a thing, like any startup, right? You want to bring something innovative. Okay. It's great. An idea is great, but how do you execute? And that's where I would have liked to see it on the more business side of things. Um, I'm sure if we gave you guys an extra six hours, my mind would be blown away, but given the time constraints, I think, uh, you guys took on a, on, a, you took a lot on your plate with that, which is, which is admirable, but um, I think it would have been great to see a little more in terms of the, the business execution on the marketing side of things, as well as, uh, you know, the overall, just the, the, the risk associated with, you know, we, we invest in setting up a location. Are we vulnerable to our supplier of that location? The, the, the real estate agent, are we going to get kicked out? You know, what's, you know, how much, how much time do we need? Do we get a, a 90 day notice from the landlord saying, Hey, we found a long-term lease, you know, winners is going to come and set up shop or, you know, you guys got to boot it, you know, you guys got to get out of here. So what's our contingency plan in case that happens? Um, you know, where do we store our assets that we've obviously invested in building out like the soundproof walls, the, the coffee makers, all these things. So there's some logistics in mind. Work down at its core is that the idea is that we can set up and take down within minutes. What you guys proposed was more of a sedentary kind of like lay it out. It stays there. It's not pick it up in the morning and shut it down at night, which is okay because you did still tackle the, the repurposing of the unused space, which is great. And like I said, it was very different from what we're currently doing, but it's not something that we wouldn't uh, not pursue. But I think um, it would have been great to see, okay, if we're going to do this, what, you know, what's, uh, you know, how exposed are we to risk, you know, how leveraged do we have to be? Uh, and then how do we just, how do we tackle the overall aesthetics? You know, I mean, look, uh, it, it makes sense to set up shop and let's say, you know, I keep saying winners, not to, you know, sh bang on winners, but like, you know, what's the overall visual of it? What's the feel? What's the vibe? What does it smell like? What does it look like? What's on the walls? Is it nice? When we go in restaurants and bars, it's already set to be very pleasing. Department stores are very typically fluorescent lights. It's blank. It's more aligned with office. So it would be nice to see how we tackle the aesthetics. Um, but anyways, that was just my, my feedback, but I mean, you know, guys, my hat's off to you for, for jumping into a, a vertical that is, is very large and, and very much it's a gap. So it's very entrepreneurial how you approached it because, uh, you know, there's a big gap in that market and you guys went into it. So, uh, you know, hats off to you on that one. I was brave. Yeah. To add on that, and that's the thing I love the most about this. Uh, it's how uh, different it was and going in a market that was in leverage at all so i really love that i love the way that you set up your three uh three kind of segment of clients too i don't know if uh, reg mentioned that but like the level one two and three really love that especially in that space uh, i think was really different specific and lower the cause versus the uh the competition i really love that as well uh the only place and i think it's i, I don't want to repeat that but just how to implement those uh, that's why i was like uh probably like would have had like to have a little bit more details uh, but beside that, on my side, I really love it. And I really love uh, when you're thinking about ventures and startup, uh, I think you need to find those niche market that are not yeah. up. And uh, you ladies just did that. I was just looking it was all ladies. So yeah, you ladies just did that. So really love that side. And I'm not sure if 
Vangnish is in the room yet. Um, I don't see him. Uh, but so, yeah, so overall it was good. Really loved it. Uh, really loved the engineering as well and uh, the the clip with the magnets as well. So I think that's good if you want to close shop quickly. Uh, that's a good thing. And probably you can put the same in the restaurants. I'm not, it's not my field. I'm in finance. Probably Steve can talk more about this, but yeah. uh, really love it. And I love it. It was different and going somewhere that uh, nobody probably think of. I didn't think of when I was running the case. So props to you. As, as a co-founder of a business, it's all about vision. It's all about making this grand, huge idea come to life. When you, you know, instead mentioned it's like the startup of like finding the gaps and stuff like that. Well, you know, you guys did address one. And then there's the rabbit hole, the rabbit hole, which goes very, very deep because, you know, it's like when you, when you find solutions for something, the more you learn, the more you realize, oh, there's more problems. And as you keep going. So I think that, as I mentioned, I'm sure if you guys had six hours more time, you go down that rabbit hole and you find solutions. But, um, you know, it's, it's just the, also too, you guys did address the, the ESG. I did like the, the sound barrier, the, the, you know, the materials you guys made. Um, that was very cool. I'm, I'm glad because that's obviously one of the core values for us. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, uh, I think at this point, I'm just rambling on waiting for Venetia to jump in, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I can ramble on all day, but I don't know. But, uh, that's it. So, I mean, that's, that's, uh, I think uh, that's what, uh, that's my feedback. Thank you for all the feedback. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, how was the experience like, off topic? How was the experience of doing this virtually? Did you guys meet to do this or was it all on Zoom? Uh, how was it off topic? It was all, yeah, on Zoom. all separated. Yeah, yeah we actually, all separated. Yeah, we've practiced before, like on Zoom, like doing practice cases. So we were kind of used to the format. So it wasn't too much of a shift, although it would have been nice to be able to be face to face, you know, coming to the competition in person and everything. Yeah, 100%. I feel it. It's definitely yeah, like a really long time to sit in front of a computer. And I think Thursday is definitely going to really test those boundaries with the 12 hour case. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, it was definitely, it was challenging, but I feel like we did our, the best we could have done with it, um, with, with all of the, the different problems that we could have had. <laughs> of course, for sure. No, I can only imagine the, it must've been a very long day for everybody. Um, you know, we get the fun part, we get the end result and we get, you know, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, look, it, this is great. I, I get, to, I get to hang out with you guys, talk to you guys and, and, and listen to the ideas you have. It's, it's kind of mind blowing when you, you start a business, you know, literally on a beanbag with your best buddy and you're in your condo two years. And then two years later, you're, you're having like amazing, brilliant people pitch you ideas. And it's like, it's, it's, it's such a cool experience for me. And, and I want to thank you guys for being a part of that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think you guys did a great job for, for what you can do today, given the technical and just overall, you know, atmospheric limitations of, of being away. But you know what, it's, it's definitely, uh, it, it is my, you know, it's admirable. And it's like, you guys, you guys, are adapting to the, the, the current context of where we are and it, you're perse persevering. So it shows about your character as well, shows that you guys are saying, hey, look, uh, hey, I, this, is, this is my school year. I wanna accomplish this. I wanna be part of Entron Games. I'm not gonna let this pandemic stop me and you guys stepped up to the plate. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really fun to get to know the business and learn about it. Sure, for sure. Appreciate that. Francis, I think that's your cue. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I caught it. I um, <laughs> I um, I just think it's uh, it's a little interesting that Vignesh is still uh, not here. Uh, maybe he's experiencing some technical difficulties. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for the presentation. Wonderful job, and thank you for the judges to um um for the for the feedback and everything um and right now i think we're pretty much done for this presentation and we're gonna enter a break session and and i will and i will speak on vinish's behalf i'm sure he would have been loved to have given your feedback in the break room he was very vocal about it uh you know we end up being very much aligned um and and he had great things to say about you guys and and 
So I'm sure uh, he wishes he was here, but hey, listen, we're, we're in a very technically challenging world. So, you know, uh, but uh, he'll, he'll put his input on the, on the, on the evaluation. So much and hopefully we can help with your future <laughs> you guys already started so i'll take you up on that you know let's all connect let's all stay in touch and uh you know when things open up again let's let's all hey let's all get a coffee let's all hang out and chat i want to hear more ideas we would love that <laughs> yes, please <laughs> awesome all right perfect thank you guys have a good day thank you Thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah. So hi everyone. Uh, Francis, I'm just gonna let you know that we are trying to reach Vignesh right now. Okay, perfect. So uh, we're just gonna try and make contact with him. And for the judges. Uh, if you guys can just please go into the breakout room uh, because there is there is still entering scores that we would need you to do before you kind of go on the break. Uh, so you should be able to just access that. All right. Yeah. Breakout room joining now. And I'll meet you guys there if you have any questions. participant in the team uh, breakout room. Pardon? I have a participant in the team breakout room. Hold on, let me get her back. Hi. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> oh, she left? Yeah, she left. Okay. We're on schedule. I love that for us. I know. Let's see. I'm gonna join the judges. Hi, Vignesh.
Are we live on YouTube? Like, are we stars or something? Yeah, you guys are live. But it's still not published yet. We're going to publish it uh, either today uh, at night or tomorrow morning. Okay. Oh, so it's not live. It's kind of live, but not really live. Is that how I'm understanding this? Yeah. Interesting. So we still, have to behave. we still have to behave, but if we accidentally make a mistake or say a swear word, you guys can edit it out? <laughs> yes, kind of. Perfect. <laughs> Rana? Yes. Could you just confirm that we're actually presenting at 510? Uh, or not? Because I think Stefania changed her message. It should be 550. Okay, all right, so we're on break. Yeah. So on it's break. a 50 minute break? Yes, so let's just come back at 5.40. So if we uh, you know, run into some technical issues, we'll still have time to figure it out. Um, I guess we're, we're gonna have a 30 minutes break. Okay. And Can we chat that. here or do we have to chat in the other room? Let's chat in the other room because um, yeah, it's live streamed. Let's uh, let's uh, let's chat in the other room. Okay. Are you gonna join them or? Yeah, I'm going to go and uh, chit chat with them.
Hello. Hi, Rana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's nice to see you. You too. Uh, thank you so much for being so understanding yesterday. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> thank you. Oh, the familiar Slack sound. Right now, will we be uh, sent the? Oops. Will we be sent the uh, case later today? I'll try to send it as soon as possible. Uh, maybe after the presentations are done. That's fine. I just wasn't sure what time all the presentations were going to be done today. So. <laughs> uh, at about seven thirty-eight ish. Okay, thanks. No problem. Hi, Victor. Hello. Good yeah. afternoon. Good evening. Sorry. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing very good. Thank you. How are you too? Yeah. Good, good. Ready for uh, the presentation? Yes. I'm just waiting for my teammates. Yeah. Victor, are you in the uh, Globe International team? Yes, I'm in the Globe International team. Yes. How's it going, Victor? It's going good. It's going good. Thank you. Awesome, man. Very nice to meet you. You too as well. Hey, like the matching tie with the headset. <laughs> Thank you. Attention to detail. Love that. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. <laughs> cool. Very nice background too. Yeah, well, hey, gotta, gotta make it with what you got right now, you know. Victor, can you rename yourself with your... Uh, ah, yes. Name? I'm just going to do that right now. Sorry about that. It must have changed when I joined. No worries. Take your time.
Hi, James. Hi, Francis. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Ready for the presentation? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for one of your teammates, right? It takes, uh, so Efan will not be able to make it here today due to the personal loss. And I will cover his part. Oh, okay. So in this case, uh, only two of you are presenting. Oh, no. Cool. Cool. Emma will be joining us soon. Emma. Okay. But yes, Efan was our fourth teammate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry for his loss. It's good of you guys to, to step in and, and help out. So make yeah. him proud. Because we think that this is a great uh, learning experience. And just because one of us cannot make it, it doesn't mean that uh, it will not be the same experience for the other four three. So it's going to like push forward. And uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's great attitude, guys. Awesome. <laughs> already, already a winning attitude. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. Rock on. Uh, just a question. Do you guys have contact with Emma at the moment? Because I did see her in the case solving room for a brief moment before, but I'm just, I just want to make sure that she does have the right link. So if someone could just, uh, this is division four, I believe. Yeah. So if you can just send her, it's ngcom.ca forward slash division sure. four. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's with, hopefully uh, respond. with your permission, I, is it okay if I send her, her a, a message? Uh, if you ha uh, at this uh, point, sure uh, uh, I Rana, do you want to step in on that one? <laughs> yeah, you can uh, send her a text, uh, just uh, letting her know to join as soon as possible, yeah. because we were supposed to be starting on the fifty-minute mark. Uh, Rana, it looks like she just sent an email to you. She copied. Jim and I as well. She's yeah. can't, she can't log into the portal. Uh, do you uh, mind if I email her? Uh, do you mind if I email her? I think her phone might be off just due to the rules. Okay, I'll just yeah, sure. Yeah, you can just email her with the link I sent. Uh, that will redirect her directly to the Zoom. I can ask the organizers, have there been many IT issues with the uh, uh, competition so far? Not really. I think it's uh, going good. Oh, that's good. Okay. Hi, Emma. Hi. I'm sorry for the late. No, it's okay. So if any one of you can share their screens and uh, you can get started. Being alone, we can do so little, but together we can achieve greatness. With the ongoing impact of the pandemic, it is such a challenge for people from across the world to collaborate efficiently. That is where we need to rethink the new co-working experience. Good afternoon. My name is James Pham, and I'm here with my colleagues from the Globe International, Victor and Emma. And we're here to present to you our proposal to help bringing the co-working experience of work then to the next level. Our financial expert, Efan, will not be here today. However, I'll briefly give you a snapshot of our financial you know, implementation plan. COVID-19 has created an opportunity for your companies to relook and diversify your co-working solutions while at the same time leveraging your unique brand. And this opportunities only come because of three problems. The first one is into what we call integration without assimilation. You don't want to be another co-working space. You want to be the co-working -work space for everyone who think on top of their mind. That is why integrating branding identity at every stage should be in every of the implementation plan. 
Building on top of that, the second problem is an inconsistent branding across your location. Sure, the brand, the feels of the coffee shop and the restaurant can give the create generate creativities for the users. However, it does not bring the field of work than co-working space. And that is why it's one of the problem we need to relook at it. And finally, limited service offering. We think you are being too dependent on the restaurant and there's many other B2B clients out there that you can tap on. Our overview recommendation, it's in the short term, you should leverage the opportunity that the pandemic is creating for you and focus on B2C market share. And in the long term, you should expand to other B2B partnerships. Looking at your custom, your revenue structure, we identify that 80% of your revenue customers are coming from the B2B side. And that mainly come from the restaurant environment in Quebec. However, right now you have only captured four out of 13,900 13, full service restaurant in Quebec alone. And there's a huge opportunity for you there to use their vacant location because right now 50% of all of them are operating at 50% capacity. Looking on the B2C side, we identify there are three main market that customer that you can tackle in. The first one is because of the pandemic, one third of the employer in Canada report that 10% of their employees are working from home. And that number runs up to five, that means it's 500,000 remote employees are working across Canada. The second B2C market that you can tap into is the 7.2.7 million freelancers are working across Canada. And one niche market, the final niche market you can look on is the university student full-time in Quebec, which make up of 150,000 students. And now let's take a look at the Warden current model and approach. So other than most of the advantages that other co-working play also can offer, we were able to identify some unique selling point that only Warden have. First of all, we have the affordable and flexible pricing. So we have the option package both for individual and for larger organization. And moreover, by partnering with local business and local restaurant, it gives us the asset wide range of location. It also help us to support local. It help us to strengthen the neighborhood that we partner with. And last but not least, wouldn't have the optimized space uses so that no empty space at any given time will be left just there. However, on the other side, we also saw that there are some improvement that opportunity that Gordon can really work on. First of all, it's a lacking branding consistent. So right now, if a customer go to Gordon restaurant, partnering, they only see the unique of that restaurant. They don't see the Gordon unique point there. So in the second thing is that the lacking in quality control. We don't have any staff that will be on the floor to make sure at all time, the restaurant will make sure they follow all the standard, all the policy that we want to give our customer the best experience. And last but not least, like James already mentioned, B2C is really potential market share, especially during the COVID-19 right now. So why don't we touch on that as well? And now, move to Peter. Given pricing is one of unique Warden's unique selling points, we also considered competitors in Quebec and their pricing. And we discovered for Lee Camp, East Space, and BNKR, the pricing ranges between $200 and $10 to $300 every month. And so really, if we want to implement a similar bundle, we should be looking at $80 to $120 monthly. And of course, giving furniture is a very important aspect of the co-working industry. We, we considered some alternatives to traditional metal and wood furnitures. And we discovered two major alternatives, hemp wood and bamboo wood. And so both of these have a lot of advantages, given they're eco-friendly, they're stronger, they're more durable, and they're often low costs. And so really, these are superior, superior alternatives to traditional wood and metal furnitures. And so there were four criteria guiding our decision. 
The first one is brand consistency. So you want uniformity across all locations of work then. The second point was the fact that it has to be scalable. You want to expand the solution to other locations across Quebec and across Canada. Thirdly, customer experience. So customer comfort should be a priority in whatever decision we make. And finally, given, like I mentioned previously, pricing is one of Walkden's unique selling points. Our solution should also be cost effective. And given all the improvement opportunity that Walkden can make in all, based on all the criteria Victor just mentioned, we recommend you in the short term, we go we go there and capture the B2C co-working market share. In the long term, we bring in more innovation, we leverage the technology and we expand into B2B market. So it's not only stop at the restaurant, but it also can be to a last, larger scale location. So how are we gonna achieve this plan? We will break our recommendation into two phases. The, in the first three years, we're gonna develop the Guardian Citizen Bundle in the Passport app. And in the, la in the next three years, we're gonna develop the Guardian Business Hub. So the Passport app will give you the access, the controls, and it make you much more easier to access and control to both of the bundle and the hub in the future. And now let's take a closer look into what is the Citizen Bundle at Guardian. So, the bundle will be safe to individual customer so that they can implement it at their house, at their working place or any place they want. And by designing and giving it out for manufacture, we can control on our branding because we can put the bundle in the color theme, in the logo and in other wording characteristics. And also the CD then bundle also will be adjustable and how we're gonna adjust this, it's gonna be coming up on next slide. So this will give you a more detail into what a Warren Citizen Bundle. So it will have the height of bridge in two meter, and then it will build up using the bamboo and the hand material. So that we can emphasize the echo and the environmental aspect of our product. And also most of them will be foldable. So it's easier for transportation and it's also easier for you to adjust this. Seeing as you can see in the picture right there, you can scale it up, you can scale it down. And by putting panel together, you can expand to the size that you want. And then how are we gonna produce it? So we want to bring in the 3D uh, technology. We're not gonna be the one who manufacture it, but we will look for the manufacturer who have the technology that we want them to use. And then by building the wooden foldable furniture and work and walls, it will be included in our wooden bundle. And then in the long term, we want to develop the wooden business hub. So as you already see in the bundle, it's vertically, but after the COVID-19 passed, then people probably don't, then people not gonna need that bundle anymore in their house. They can go out there, they can network it. And then that's the time we will bring back our vertical and then we make some change to it, make it horizontal. We stack it up and we use this concept as the, this concept already proved in architecture, that's for the durable and for the space that it can be safe. And then by stack up, different unit up to build the business hub. It allows us to scaleable and upgradable because depend on the scale of the location, on the size of the floor, we can see as much as they need. And now let's talk about the customer journey of how are we gonna bring in all those different ideas together. We would want you to introduce the Wooden Passport app. And this is the app for all the citizens of Wooden to come together because the, at the end of the day, collaboration is the key. On the app, there'll be three key features. First, they, the citizen can customize their work dance citizen bundle at home. The second feature will focus on finding the co wooden co-working space outside of their home. And the last one is they can book and reserve their co-working space. It, the, the way that the app works is first, the citizen will come, up, come on the app, create an account and logged in, 
The second one is it will set the preference. There will be a form that will ask them for their working environment at home. What is the available furniture that they have at home? And the last one I want you to focus on is the AR scan. This will utilize the AR the camera on their smartphone to look around their working space at home and identify and so show them the real size furniture that work then offer in their bundles. And it also measure the panels that we will set up at their home as well before we even ship out the bundles to their home. And how are we gonna capture it? The key message marketing we want to focus on it's working apart, but together. And we would want to use the channel, email, website, and social media on the B2C side to capture it. The highlight we want to focus on this campaign is, is a four months campaign at the base year 2020 and also in the 2021 and would like to, the KPI to have 5,000 subscription. On the B2C side, once we have built the B2C customer database, we use that to leverage and bring and market that, promote that to the B2B one. And this is where the, the long-term year 2024 and 2026 comes in we'll do first one in 2024 for four months and the second one in 2026 in six months. And the key message is that we have the database and the customer, we can bring that to your restaurant or to other vacant spaces across Quebec. This ethics and sustainability is the key factors we look at in our plan. The new service offering should offer additional income sources the work then passport app allows for social inter interactions despite the, the impact of COVID-19 and the 3D printed furniture using hemp and bamboo woods contribute to reducing 20% of the carbon emissions that conventional furniture created. Our project, our projected revenue stems for five years starting at the base year of 2021 we expected to have a 7 million net income at the end of 2026. Our profit margins are 20%. Looking at the cost and revenue structures, as you can see on the left-hand side, the graph here, at the base year 2021 and the first year 2022, marketing to the B2B, to the B2C is the key message. That is why it, it takes up 20% of the cost. The, Additional 40%, it's related to operations because we have to create the manufacturer, the 3D printing, the bundles. And the last one is the R, the last percentage is for the R&D where we have to redesign the panels and all the bundle that comes into the bundles. Coming into 2022, it's uh, operation. Once we ramp up our manufacturing 2022 and 2023, we'll take uh, contribute to the most of the cost and that cost reduce along the way. Our revenue structures will see a increase in B2C in the first two years. And in this remaining of our plan, we'll coming back to the B2B main, is as the main client. And in the risk, we were able to identify two big risks right now. Most of the first one is that the COVID-19 uncertainty is still be there. So the social restriction could extend longer. So in order to deal with this, we got reassess after the first three years of our short-term plan and then if it's needed we're going to extend the short-term plan longer and the second one is low market capture rate and in order to deal with it risk we will assess and reallocate our marketing projects now let me quick sum up on the whole proposal so today Warden walk into the room they bring to the table all the challenges that Warden facing right now given the COVID-19 situation however as a consultant team, we were able to sort in the underlying in the enormous opportunity that come from both Warden internal strength and the right, Sorry, guys, um, but the time is up. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Great presentation. Now, the judges, if you have any questions, please uh, do ask away. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, look, good job. You know, uh, I just want to say you guys stepped up. I know you're, you're, you're a team member short and you guys, uh, you guys stepped up. So, so hats off to you. Uh, well, uh, I'm Reggie. I'm the co-founder of Workden. So thanks uh, for, for your time. It's really cool to see you guys 
jump into such detail. Great presentation, great visuals. Um, feedback will be for later. Major question for you guys. <clears throat> Just in, I'd say in 30 seconds, quick, what are we offering here? There's, from what I understand, we're introducing almost like a home and residential part of the business. And then there's the commercial side of the business. Could you just clarify that? Cause I, it's, it's really cool. Very, very great ideas in terms of 3D printing. Walk me through the visuals of the furniture and then the, and then the, and then the residential part of the side. Uh, there's so many interesting things I could talk on, but let's just in 30 seconds, tell me the difference between residential and commercial. I can take on this question. So our plan have two stages. The first one, we want to leverage the um, people who are working from home because of the pandemic. So we want to focus on residential side to capture that, uh, that market. So we created a citizen bundle. We'll have all the essential equipment that they're missing in their home working space um, that you can offer. And to do that, we have the working app then. And one of the feature on that app is to have an AR scan and who will have the the real size furniture that your company can provide for the residential um, place. The second part of the, the, the plan is focused on the B2B customers. This is where you still leverage your restaurant um, partnership, but at the same time, we also see um, other uh, spaces are vacant, especially like the, like the mall. And we propose that um, the, the panels that we have on residential, because of the structure it has, the exo structure it has, you can flip it horizontally, stack it up, and depending on the height of the space, the vacant space, you can have it. And in the mall, the 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 floor height it's really high, so it can stack up to three floor. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I don't want. I obviously have so many questions to follow up on, but one quickly um, now. Deploying the so we're we're you know in the short term residential everybody stuck from home that's true you know hey look the reality is we're in under very extraordinary times the pandemic COVID we're all kind of being in this forced new way of life are we going to invest heavily in creating this short term solution for it to become very obsolete in a matter of months or what is the will it will it show an ROI even when we the world opens back up again and B2B is still, you know, people are leaving their homes or going to work and going to our locations. Will that will our B2B business side of thing end up cannibalizing any revenue or investments we made into the residential side for the short term? I can take this one. And so the items are gonna be shipped into the homes and they're gonna become obsolete. And so they can pretty much be collected back and then installed in these malls and restaurants and other B2B locations. And so really we also consider the fact that these things could become obsolete, but we realized that after the COVID pandemic is over, they could be taken back from these homes and then installed in whatever locations we decide to so restaurants, malls and the likes. Gotcha, cool, great, thanks. Uh, here, Vignesh, uh, here. So just have a question here. When you guys speak about manufacturing, you want to do, you want to produce all the uh, uh, items by yourself. Um, and uh, after that, uh, like, can you explain on the costs involved on manufacturing by yourself and all the associated costs involved in it? And what is the ROI in it? Yeah, I can uh, answer the questions. Um, so let's look at the uh, financial, the cost structure again. So in the first year, in the base year 2021, we would like to find a 3D printer provider in Quebec to partner, uh, to print the, uh, the, uh, the bundle, citizen bundle from them. That is why in the base year and it's the operation costs take up to 40%. On the second year, of our plan 2022, because we have done our marketing plan and people are realizing, oh, hey, there's this great uh, work then bundles that we can leverage for our home workspace. Our manufacturing and operations uh, costs ramped up to take up most majority of the costs in the 2022 and 2023. In 2024 up to 2026, because this is where we move to the B2B um, side, we focus more into it. Um, in the first year, 2024, there's not been like we, we cut down the manufacturing for B2C market. But in 2025, after our marketing plan for B2B, 
we ramped up the, the, the manufacturing and the op that's why the operation costs come up again. Okay, and what about the setup cost of the factories and uh, everything? Uh, have you taken that into account in, in here? Yeah, so- For we, the manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. please. Um, so we consider two options. The first one, whether we buy it right, uh, like right up front the, the machine to, to have the greater control or we can list them. And the way that we think you comp your company should go is to lease the 3D printer uh, and use it depending, depending on the, the demand of the market, then you can kind of like change and adjust the volume of the productions along the way. Yeah, thank you. I have a few questions, guys. First of all, great presentation. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cut that a little bit short, but uh, love it. I could have kept hearing from you guys for another minute or two uh, without a problem. First question, uh, we're going B2C, B2B. How do we uh, kind of maintain the business and the relationship with our restaurant? Because we don't want to go too far off uh, the core business that we're currently having. So any thought on that or have you guys thought of how to kind of kind of keep nurture that business with the restaurants? Uh, thank you for your question. So like in the short term where the business industry right now is not really fast. So we are gonna still keep the partnership relationship with them. However, we're not too focused on that at this moment, but we more focus on the B2C. And then after the time where we have the app and then we have the customer data because they're joining the Gordon networking in the B2C short-term market. And then we can also bring that up to offer to our restaurant partnership. And then also like we, when we have more access to the B2C customer, that means our location of the customer even gonna be bigger. So by that time, depend on the like the customer location, we can also take a look into more and more restaurant at that local if there was a high demand over there. But uh, in the shop, way to answer the question is that, yes, we still keep the relationship with the restaurant uh, partnership, yes. Awesome. And just to follow up on that, just on the market share, uh, I think in the case it mentioned that there's a lot of companies that are kind of going under uh, because of the COVID and everything that is happening. And I guess their expenses are, uh, the revenues are not meeting their expenses. Uh, how can we kind of grab those market share? Uh, I know I think we discussed a little bit of marketing uh, campaigns, uh, but can you guys go a little bit more in depth on that? Like how can you structure that? Because we have three uh, kind of segments that you mentioned, the, uh, the employees working from home, uh, the freelancers and the students. So is there like different campaigns for each one of them? Because I, I believe they don't have the same needs. Uh, so how are we tackling this or have you thought about this? A couple of tactics uh, we think that your company can implement is to create the, like have promotion and incentive for the customer to encourage them changing from the co-working space where they are using and down to using work then. And things like um, reduce the subscription cost for the first three months or have a um, complimentary value add-on for the bun citizen bundle that we send them home or um, promotions uh, or uh, promotion that we can collaborate with the restaurant to provide them with a bundle, not only the working space, but also like they come there to and have discount on, on food and drinks. Awesome. Do we have more time for a question, Francis? Or how are we on time? I have so many questions. Yeah, I can go on all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can go all day. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, we'll go into the VFAC section, but <clears throat> I think um, I think you guys are not short of any ideas. There, there are so many things to go with. Um, yeah, I would say, okay. So I would say, what would be the timeline for a rollout like this? Like we're talking, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. So this is the, this is the, this is the, the reality of a startup is that you have great ideas. And then it all comes down to execution. And we're a fail fast type of company first, right? So we want to go to market quick, learn, get the data. I like that you guys have a lot of customer feedback data. You guys enable that. Now, um, how, how quick can we roll these things out? You know, you talked about costs. We're talking, now we got, we got to think, okay, I get a new location, right? I, I get demand in, in 
West Island of Montreal, for example. We need to step a location. We land a B2B client. We need to step a location uh, in, in two weeks. Is this feasible? What's the lead time? You know, I know we, you guys spoke about, you know, having to source the equipment and work with the manufacturer to, to create and design it. What are the lead times? How long does it take? Uh, what's the supply chain looking like? I can take this one. And so initially, due to the COVID pandemic right now, we can't really work on the B2B markets. And so right now, the research and development for the B2B markets, um, such as um, the, um, that's the works, that's the bond, right? It's actually beginning right now. So let's say by 2023, you get demand, um, let's say for restaurants and malls, given you have started production and then you've started working towards it from, from this point. At that point in time, it's going to be easy to satisfy that demand. And additionally, um, you're just transferring the bundle from the home to the restaurant. And so it's a matter of just uninstalling it at um, the home location and then installing it at the restaurant locations. And I also mentioned it's a very portable bundle, so it's not going to be difficult to, let's say, collapse and then reinstall and then nail into the wall. It's something that can be easily set up. Great, thanks. And I have a question. Are those, when you give to clients, like, I don't know, I'm just thinking, can I kind of like do business with uh, Reg on this? Be like, hey, Reg, I want one of those bundles and I rent that place in my apartment. Is that something, That's how. is that how you think about it? Or how do you guys thought about this idea? Because I kind of love it. Um, so here's what it's, it's, here's the beauty of it. So this one, this bundle, it's a one, think of it like a, like a body. And this is one of the cell. And this one, the skeleton of it, you can 3D print it. So the skeleton is reusable. The, the panel material, can you can replace it depending on the location. So let's say after the pandemic, the people, we don't like, I don't want this to be at, uh, at my place anymore. Then you can strip down the, the cloth or whatever material that they prefer. You reused it in the, the, uh, the restaurant and the mall and you change the panel. And this one is also stackable and snap into each other too. So think, envision a building, a vacant building, right? With all of these exo cells and people working together, but apart. It's safe, it's scalable, and only it's scalable in the horizontal way, but also vertical when you flip it because of the exo skeleton, the exo that it has. Then when you flip it horizontally, you can stack it up to three floor. And it, depending on, like, let's say you want to have a, a like a business top in the mall, Work and business stuff at the mall like this can stack up to three, four. Okay, cool. Uh, regarding your marketing cost, like you had like 20%, like can you give a breakup on where you would be spending on marketing? Uh, how would you be gaining the customers? Yes. Um, so right now I only keep, we only keep the, the cost as a uh, like ratio and the percentage and depending um, like in our mitigation plan, depending on the, um, how the, the market responds to this idea, then we reallocate if they re respond badly and the capture rate is low, then we re reallocate the marketing later. Yeah, but okay, I, thank I you. I don't have the exact number for it. Yeah. We're if we're going to start, Vinash, if you had another question. Or... No, no, I'm, I'm good. Please. Well, so, quick question on the, uh, on the business hub. So flipping it, so it's horizontally, popping them into vacant areas, malls or whatever. So we're, we're kind of creating these little, almost like a crate where you can walk in and get work done. Uh, it, it's kind of like these mini little breathers, you know, across these empty spaces, which is pretty neat. Um, it's funny because it is kind of a den, so it is very much a play on, on the branding. Um, question, what, you know, what's in it for, who, who's our host? Who's our, who's our you know, who's, uh, we, we pop this in a, in, a, in a mall. Are we paying to rent out the space to put our crate there? Is it like now a kiosk? Um, how is this helping the local business community? Who are we partnering with, or is it just a matter of we rent out a section somewhere and we put our space there? People just go to it and we take, you know, just walk me through the, the 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 agreement that I have with my host partners, the people who I'm I'm putting my these little things uh, in, like a you know a mall or something like that. Just walk me through that if you guys have a chance. Um, thank you for your question. I can take this on. So we will more focus on the large uh, location, which is like have a low uh, density of people coming there because there are two reasons. 
most of all, we want to give the our customer the space that is like privacy enough and it's not too noisy, too lousy because of like the crowded in the mall. And then the second thing is that by bringing people in here, they can work in your mall, but then if they want some drink or if they're done with the work faster than they want, and then they can go out to the mall. So that also can help the mall to attract more customer. And then that will also bring the customer to the mall. That's how we're gonna help the, the, the uh, mall um, economy and then the second question is that who gonna host it so we're looking for in the first phases uh when we implement this business need help when the mall probably not really believe in our model first so we're just gonna rent the space so that we can put it up and then after a time when they can see all the benefits that our hub can bring to them then we can talk more and think more to about partnership so that we can share the host or that we can make another plan that is more suitable in the long term. Great, thanks. All right, guys, perfect. Um, great presentation, by the way. Um, and uh, as much as I'd love to um, let the conversation continue, I'm afraid that our time for um, Q&A is over. So now what's going to happen is that uh, my colleague Rana is going to assign everybody to a breakout room. Um, the judges will um, do their evaluation and then you guys can talk amongst yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys.
let's keep the same rotation. You go, Vagnage goes, and uh, I'll end. It works. Sounds good to me. So I guess we'll, we'll wait till everybody comes back. Got the whole globe. All right, I think everybody is back. So um, judges, the floor is yours. Okay, guys, uh, look, rock star presentation, great visuals, um, you know, extremely ambitious ideas, uh, awesome. We, we, you know, you definitely stimulated a lot of, of conversation with, with uh, the judges. Um, we, we definitely have one quick question just to clarify, because I don't want to give a, a feedback based on something, just want to clarify. In people's homes, putting these, these, these units in people's homes, now, the person who brings it into their home, they're renting it from Workden, um, are they renting it out to anybody else and monetizing it or they're just renting it for their personal use? Could you guys just clarify that really quick? I know I'm not doing Q&A, but I think that's going to really help with our feedback. Yes, I would say the model is to rent it to use for personal use. Okay. And the model will be simple, simple, uh, similar to um, the delivery where you have one unique uh, uh, account for one unique uh, user that ties with their credit card and their, their phone number. So they cannot just use it to monetize somewhere else. Gotcha. Okay. So, so I guess we'll, we'll jump into the feedback. Um, <clears throat> feedback overall, you guys thought of so many different things. Um, so many great ideas, even down to like the whole, the whole supply chain of the whole, the, everything like, you know, repurposing the asset, finding new ways of monetizing different revenue streams. You know, you guys went down the rabbit hole and it was pretty impressive how many different ideas you thought it in, in six hours. The one thing that I got to say is that highly ambitious, but sometimes that's at the detriment of, of focus. Now, the reality of the startup economics in life is that you need to establish yourself with something that people can understand. If you, if you like, when you think of Uber, Uber what we see today has so many different offers but Uber started with one thing and it became known for that one thing. So I think, you know, I speak on behalf of the judges, we, we didn't really get to hear how we're going to nurture that restaurant model to create good brand awareness, to create that comfort and that credibility to the customers so that they can trust us and maybe start rolling out these different things and actually start renting things out, et cetera. Um, I was a little, you know, it's a little bit, I'm a little bit on the fence of how that divide, pro how there's value in people renting out these units. As you mentioned, on the other hand, that people are going to rent it out so they can rent it out to other people to lessen the burden of their home rent. Well, that's great because that's actually how Workdown got started. And that is a very great idea. There's a whole logistics and regulations and zoning issues that go along with that. But overall, that idea would have been great. So I, I think that you guys thought of so many different things, but you're like one degree away of making it all come full circle and blowing and exploding my mind, right? So I think the general feedback is, there was no shortage of amazing ideas. You guys thought of so many different things and, and you thought of how to monetize it and you're very, num you know, uh, um, like uh, efficient based as you, for lack of better words, uh, but that the lacked that delicate little simplicity to actually make this not only just like executable, but like under, like for people to actually understand what work then does because when you're a new company, you're fighting with a lot of attention. People are getting bombarded with ads. There's all these new startups. People are going to be like, oh, Workdown, they do this. I don't think people will really be like, oh, I don't really know what Workdown does. They do this, that, 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 all these things. Like you need to start with something in the beginning and then the long term. So I think you guys are just really ahead of your time. And we didn't like, we kind of, it kind of deviated away from the initial nurturing the initial business model. Uh, yes, I, I just want to add like what, uh, St Stephen was saying, uh, since me being a numbers guy, I, I always look at like the nitty gritties of uh, everything. I pick on small, small stuff. Uh, one of the key things is that when you guys come up with your financials, uh, you should be like uh, pretty clear to back up your numbers. And uh, yeah, like every single thing has to be uh, properly uh, documented like, okay, this is what I'm spending on uh, 3D manufacturing. This is what I'm going to spend on marketing. And once I spend this much money on marketing, this is the amount of people I'm going to uh, like target and get those people. And based on that, uh, I'm going to get this much amount of revenue. And that's how you should have that circular uh, things. And once you guys do it, then it's much more easier for us to, uh, okay, these guys are thought through everything. Uh, that, that would be my 
uh, advice. And uh, apart from that, I'm happy with your presentation. Uh, you guys uh, had like uh, pretty good creative ideas, um, which would be really uh, nice uh, if you had guys that backed up with all the data that uh, that would have been made it more convincing. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll say overall it was great presentation. We love great job at James for uh, going in for your partner that she or she, he wasn't there. So good job on that. And good job to everyone as well on the team. Great presentation. I really love the idea of uh, uh, bringing this home. Uh, would have loved it even more if it could rent it to someone else. To be honest, I was just thinking about myself. I'm like, hey, if I can bring that home, rent it to someone else in my living room, I'm in, my friend. I'm in. I'll buy this. I'll buy, this I'll buy five of them. I don't care. Uh, so great presentation on that. I really love the idea. I love how you can recycle that into the business and the mall stuff. I love the mall ideas as well, just because they're having so much issues right now and they're struggling financially. So I love mm. that uh, you thought or think it's outside the box there. Um, and the only place I will probably add is just nurture the business, as, uh, as Steve said. Um, that's probably like it's a core competency of uh, of Warden. Uh, I would have just love to probably uh, work with that and see how we can solve their problem first, and then branch out uh, to those others uh, ideas that you guys have. So I'll probably just push uh, the schedule to like one or two years. Focus on restaurant for two more years. Just be like, hey guys, we're doing business. We haven't forgotten you. Uh, we'll help you guys get those revenue in. I know you struggled during the COVID. Uh, and then think about herself and branch out onto those others. But I love the B2C uh, as well during um, the pandemic. I think it's uh, kind of a good uh, recency bias. I guess like people will take that all day long. So great presentation overall. Good job, guys. Uh, and I'm sure doing this virtually and doing the presentation and mm -hmm. repping wasn't easy. So good job, good experience there because I do this all day long doing those kind of stuff virtually. And I know it's not easy. So props to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. So I mean, hey, Do you have more time, Francis. How is, are we on yeah. time? Uh, we actually still have three minutes. Uh, do you guys have anything else? If not, uh, we can just call it. Hey. Well, listen. You know, <laughs> I can talk all day about all the things you guys did, and that's that is what's really really cool about what you did. You know, and you know, I mentioned this. You guys were ahead of your time. You know, this is the type of stuff that when, when a company is a few years in and they're kind of maybe kind of flattening in sales a bit, this is the type of thing that like really like that sigmoid, whoop, they just get them back up on that rapid growth phase. Um, but in this, you have to understand the startup life is that one, you're a new company, you're not a household name. You have to get people convinced and trust you to give them your money, their money to you and become and create a repeat business thing. You guys thought so far ahead, but just maybe kind of forgot like the very, very short term part of things. Uh, so it's really hard to it, look. It's it's difficult. You know, you, you guys did so many amazing things. So I, it's, it's hard to penalize anybody for being uh, extremely creative with great ideas. Uh, you know, and, but like, look, it, the reality is, you know, when you get out there, when you start something, you got to get that momentum. And then once there's momentum, there's ways to go faster. But just to get that train moving from start, you know, to actually get it in motion, go or go wheels up, whatever expression you want it to say. Uh, that's where I was really, really like kind of lacking in that thing. But, you know, listen, uh, three, four or five years in, we had this presentation it'd be a different story. So, I mean, kudos to you guys and great presentation, great visuals. And you guys uh, are rock stars for, for helping out. And you made your, your, your team member who's not here today proud. So. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Steven. How was your experience on that side, guys? Off topic, if we just yeah. go more close. How was your experience doing this exercise? If we have like a minute or two left. Um, I think we all agreed the case was a very interesting one, given your startup. So usually just um based on like previous cases, we work with like bigger companies, but like we really, really enjoyed the case, really, because um the chance to like work on something different and then come up with all of these innovative ideas, we found that like very interesting. So yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that's the most important thing, right? I mean, it's fun to be competitive, but you guys got to be able to walk away from this, learning something, feeling good about it and having a fun time. You know, I don't want you guys sweating your suits over there. I want you guys to take it easy, relax and know you guys did an amazing job and 
and saw, you know, you, you know, you're, you guys are going to leave here in great good jobs with consulting firms and these things where you just talk to, you know, corporate clients, but in the startup world, it's a different world. It's a very savage and fast paced, very volatile world. And you need to fight for attention and, and, and dollars in your, in your, in your, you know, in your customer base, you got to get that, get, like get that momentum going. So um, you guys were just very ahead of your time, uh, but that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It will pay, it will pay dividends later on. All right. Last comment on my side, guys. I'll let you go, Francis, after. Love the recap slide, even though we went, didn't go through. Uh, mm. You're the only team so far that saw that, and I love the recap slide. I think it's a one-slide yeah. piece uh, that you were going to re like kind of recap everything. They didn't have time on, on it, but uh, really love that, and keep doing this. Uh, love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Great presentation. Yeah. Bye -bye. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Oh, wait Thank on. You. Okay, judges. Um, I think we're a little behind schedule, so we're going to take uh, five minutes in the breakout room so you guys can input the uh, scores and uh, maybe yeah. grab a coffee, water. Awesome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. Excited? <laughs> That's one word for it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fine. Okay, so we're going to be starting in approximately five minutes. Um, the judges are just in, uh, inputting the scores from the last presentation. So
Okay. Um, right now we're just waiting for one more judge, and he is back. So, Real Consulting, would you guys be able to hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, now that everybody is here, um, can somebody please share their screen, and uh, the floor will be yours. Whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. We are Real Consulting. My name is Lauren Edwards, and today I'm joined by my colleagues, Tom, Nathaniel, and Rani, and we have developed a solution for Workden to develop a sustainable co-working model that will take them into the future. Thanks, Tom. We looked at the key question that was addressed through this. How can they best improve their current service offering and expand in order to best position themselves for future growth? Through a situational analysis, we determined that Workden's internal culture and their existing offerings are very well suited to expand into a peer marketplace model, looking beyond what they currently do and using that flexible mindset to best advance. This productive workspace rental marketplace would be an online platform to allow business owners to market their venues and workspaces and be accessed directly by consumers and other businesses. We also developed an implementation proposal, including marketing and positioning strategies, as well as a financial analysis, which all of this combined would improve and increase the market share for work done and their income opportunity, it would make their services more accessible, as well as including a 400,000 net profit over 12 months. Thanks, Tom. Looking at Workden, they have a very unique offering within the Canadian market as they have very strong business values that do position them well for future growth. They were only founded a few years ago, but have still established themselves as a co-working organisation with a difference. Instead of um, leasing their own workspaces, they've been able to use those of other businesses that already exist that don't use them within traditional business hours. This has allowed them to partner with local business owners and create works workspace communities. They currently have those four key locations that are primarily restaurant spaces, but majority of their sales come from the business to business market. Looking at their core values, we see that they're really driven towards sustainability and supporting local businesses, which they've been able to do successfully through their methods in the past. But they still have maintained their strong startup culture. They have the flexibility and the ability in order to move as the market requires, um, as well as maximizing the available spaces within existing communities. Next slide, please. Um, through the brief, Workden did identify some key opportunities for expansion to be investigated, including maintaining that cost competitiveness, making them 60 to 80% less than competitors, looking at soundproofing, privacy, uh, privacy sorry, um, uniformity between the locations, as well as brand visibility, um, ensuring that the Workden brand gets out there, and looking at focusing on that comfort and usability. However, it was identified through our analysis that it would be a more effective use of their skills. Thanks, Tom in order to best improve upon their service offering and expand for the future, Workden should move to a peer marketplace model and capitalize on their pricing and their market positioning in order to best prepare for the future and gain the greatest market share. Thanks, Lauren. <clears throat> now, introducing the peer marketplace model for Workden. You might be familiar with the following brands, um, Airbnb, where I can become a host and upload my, accommodate my house. Um, for rent, Car Next Door is a platform where I can upload my car um, for rent and Quipmo, where if I say if I had a surfboard, I could put that up for rent. Um, so, and now by capitalizing on the strengths of work, then they should embrace a peer marketplace model to embrace future growth. Thanks, Tom. So our, our recommendation. Um, so we're suggesting a remodel of Workden's business strategy to encourage future expansion. And this involves a transition from the current um, business practice where Workden collaborates with businesses and business, business owners to curate workspaces in their venues um, 
towards a new model where Workden, Workden will now manage and host an online marketplace that will, that will allow business owners to market their unused venues as collaborative workspaces. Now, the benefits of the traditional method is that Workden is able to establish a more personal relationship between um, businesses and hosts. Um, Workden, it has more control over each venue. Um, however, the drawbacks are limited capacity to expand and there's too much management for Workden as they grow. Uh, the benefits for the new method is that it allows for additional income for any business owner who has the means to become a host. The online platform has the capacity to expand glo globally. And some of the drawbacks is that Workden will now sort of um, lose control over their spaces where the hosts have more control of their, their spaces. Thanks, Tom. Now, how can we achieve this transition? So we can do that through their existing website and introducing an app. Now the app has two modes, one for the customers and for the hosts. So the features for the customers is, includes a COVID, COVID safe check-in and check-out, free booking, account settings and options for premium or standard options, easy access to location and information. And yeah, and for the hosts, there's a COVID safe management and setting, setting availability dates for venue spaces. Thanks, Tom. So we can't forget about our ex existing clients. So Workden's existing partnership agreements can also be honored through the new structure where they can act as the first locations venues on work Workden's app through its current clients. Um, it also encourages increased uptake by consumers and introduces individual individuals and companies to, their, to the partners stabilizes the transition to the new platform for Workden, as there is already existing um, hosts, uh, helps maintain existing customer base while looking to expand. And of course, local businesses and the economy will be boosted due to more foot traffic. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. So Workden has the potential to expand to audiences beyond their current um, business model. So we've got our few main audiences that we're looking at. So we've got our startups and our sole traders, entrepreneurs, people with the smaller businesses. They have a smaller budget, but they have more of a demand for flexible working arrangements and they want collaborative co-working spaces. This is where we really thrive within our uh, Workden really thrives within their business model. We've also got uh, worked and has the potential to expand to professionals, people who may already be part of a large organization. However, this means they ha probably have more of a requirement for privacy and office often may already have um, traditional office spaces. We also Workden also has the opportunity to expand to students. Students, however, have a limited budget and more of a demand for convenience. But to be able to book a location to study or um, work from can be a great opportunity. Next slide, thank you. So Workden should continue with their current social media and marketing plan, but additionally, they should add some other components. So their social media at the moment is doing really well and they should continue along that stroke, but they should also recruit brand ambassadors and social media influencers to promote their brand more. So this can be done through offering free workspaces for influencers, things like that, in terms for promo and other sort of um, reach. They work done should run networking events and promotional events. This could be young entrepreneurship, um, lunches, things like that. This will really help build a stronger network and a more of a community feel and increase the co-working environment within the spaces. Workden should provide first visit free for new consumers. This will come at the cost of Workden um, and not the venues. However, it is thought that they will become returning customers and this will be earned back quite quickly. And Workden should increase the branding for the venue. Currently, there's nothing really tying the venues in except for the power boards. These power boards should become branded and there should also be branded available on site. This will allow cohesion between the venues while still remaining the uniqueness of each venue in terms of their spaces and not looking overcrowded. Next slide. Thanks, Tom. 
So mitigating risk, as always, is super important to the success of any business. We've identified four key risks for Workden. This includes the low uptake from consumers and businesses. However, this new business model provides advantages that is nowhere else on the market at the moment, which we and we already have our consumer and business base, so we have no doubt that they would be happy to transfer across. The another risk is the COVID-19 pandemic and the risk of another lockdown, shutting down services. However, with the increase of vaccines and things like that, that's looking like less of a risk. And Workdown's reputation may also be at risk due to no regular quality control of venues. However, this is something they can implement through the future. Thanks, Tom. Right. So in order to uh, analyse the financials and forecast how well the new strategy will work, um, we need to see how many people uh, Workdown would be able to capture. So primarily, uh, there's 2.68 million or around 2.7 million users worldwide uh, that enjoy these co-working spaces. And there's around 3% of that in Canada, which makes up about 80,000 people. We believe Workden would be able to capture 15% of this market due to the fact that two firms, Notel and Serendipity Labs, are facing legal battles. Uh, currently, with the three locations that Workden has, we believe the an additional six are uh, coming soon, according to Workden's website. So this would give us nine uh, locations quite quickly. We believe we'd also be able to pick up more standard locations and five premium locations. So the difference between a standard and a premium location is that the standard location is somewhere like a restaurant or uh, a nightclub in a uh, suburban area, whereas a premium location will be a office space such that as more people are moving to uh, online or teleworking, uh, many office spaces are becoming uh, more freed up. And so we believe businesses that own these areas would uh, highly likely to jump on board to our application, put their space on and rent it out uh, for a nice little profit. So uh, from these uh, 80,000 people in Canada using uh, that enjoy co-working, um, and we and that 15% that we believe worked in would be able to pick up after Notel and Serendipity have lost that market share. Uh, it gives us around 12,000 people to work with. Uh, and between 10 to 15 sites, this gives us quite a few people to play with. So initially, we'll roll out a 50% commission for the businesses. So if your business uh, restaurant signs up, you'd get a 50% commission of the fees that are listed down the bottom, which we'll get to in a second. Um, there's also a $50 quarterly fee. So this will help pay for an initial consultation from a worked in worker to analyze what type of space you have for offer. And another fee that, would, uh, that we had to account for was the wages of a worker to uh, where a business would not normally be open, they can um, put a worker on and that's the base wage in Canada. Uh, so our fee structure is fairly simple. We take the current fee structure, which had a $10 daily fee, a, and uh, we remove the weekly fee, believing that people who had a daily fee would, uh, if they wanted to do the weekly, they're probably more likely to go for a whole month. Um, and so we kept those two values, the $10 and $100. That's for our standard. For our premium, these are doubled. So offering a better space with more access to quieter areas, they can generate more revenue. And this is shown in our uh, expected cumulative earnings on the chart on the right, where the total, we believe, over 12 months is around $400,000. For the businesses that offer it, we also see that over a year, they generate a nice little profit where they would not normally have made any money due to being closed uh, and or not open. Potentially, if they're only open for dinner, they can jump on Workton's app and generate an extra $12,000 a year. So we've gone through and done an implementation timeline of the rollout schedule. And we believe within just over a year, we would have had this complete, a Workton will have this completely rolled out. Next slide, thanks, Tom. We've 
Work Done also has the opportunity to expand to more co-working spaces as well as vacant office buildings, creating more of those traditional office spaces and creating conference and function spaces. Next slide. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, everyone, for your time. On behalf of Real Consulting, we appreciate your time. Thanks. All right, thank you, team. Judges, if you have any questions, it's time for you to ask. All right, well, <clears throat> uh, thanks, guys. Great, before, great, uh, great presentation. Uh, you know, rock star dynamic with your team of going back and forth, and you guys uh, communicated well and, and complimented each other. Um, so, yeah, I mean, jumping right in, quick question. Now, <clears throat> very interesting that you guys propose the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Um, first of all, um, if you guys know, I'm Reggie. I'm the co-founder of Workden. So it's pretty cool to, uh, to be talking with you guys and uh, hearing your ideas for this. But uh, what I wanted to know is, so proposing a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, deviating away from, or, or rather adding to our current offer, um, becoming more of the Airbnb for workspace type of thing where people can list their spaces online and we take a percentage commission fee from that stuff. Um, the thing, the, the, my question to that is, what, what do you guys expect in terms of, or is it gonna cannibalize from the, from the other customers going to our regular work then spaces, meaning membership for one space, do we have access to the other spaces? And what, you know, what do you foresee in terms of uh, customer experience? Because current work then models, people show up, they have an experience, they go to a different venue, different vibe, different atmosphere, but it's the same thing, just a different location. How are we gonna maintain that quality control in the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace uh, offer? Yeah, I can take that Sorry. if that's all good. <laughs> you go, Tom. Um, yeah, you can add to it, Lauren. Um, so yeah, that's um, funny you say that because we had a look at that type of, uh, I guess, issue. Um, but we believe with that initial consultation, uh, with that $50 quarterly fee, that if a business uh, joins up and so they have a $50 fee immediately to join, uh, a, a worked in employee would go out, hopefully that $50 would be su suffice and they check to make sure that, uh, yeah, the space is nice, it, it conforms with the the culture that um, and the environment that's worked in trying to emulate across all the businesses and so having a quarterly checkup we believe will try to ensure that um did you have something to add Lauren? I was just going to talk about the initial consultation period um so before a company would be able to list their space on the Workden app um it would be required that they did have someone from Workden come out and assess the space um from there they would also be able to provide a recommendation as to whether this would be classified as a standard or premium offering space although ultimately it would be up to the host business which um, tier they did want to establish themselves within. Um, from there, it's actually to the business's benefit to ensure that the customer experience does maintain the current quality that it is at, um, because that is one of the benefits of work done. And having the additional spaces, having the Wi-Fi and maintaining that free tea and coffee space available as well um, is to the benefit of everyone involved, um, ensuring that everyone would be happy with the situation and be able to still gain that positive experience. Will, so here's another follow-up question, will work then provide the same, who, who's providing the coffee, the power plugs, the amenities, uh, the, basically when a work then member signs up, they're getting unlimited access, free coffee, tea, Wi-Fi, power plugs, you know, how are we going to um, ensure that that's kind of streamlined across all platforms and that, so just curious to see what your thoughts on that, um, if you guys have kind of figured, you know, understanding the quarterly consultation and make sure things are kind of uh, aligned with uh, our standards, um, but the logistics of starting that space up, like how do we make sure that things are there available to these uh, people who sign up on the platform, meaning this office, these extra vacant, and I, I'm happy you guys address the, the vacant office spaces because that's the reality of what's happening now, uh, but how do we ensure that, you know, when a member walks into an office space or a restaurant, you know, they're gonna get relatively the same work thing experience who is going to absorb that cost? Uh, where are we going to get it from? What's it going to look like? What's it going to smell like? What's coffee going to taste like? All these small little branding things. 
A couple different components to that question. So to address some of the first ones, and then one of the others might jump in, um, mm. the power boards would be something that we would continue to supply through there and making sure that we do have that branding element to it, just so there is some level of work done present within, presence within each location as well. Um, tea and coffee and some of the other facilities, um, as discussed as a team, we determined that it would be best for them to be provided by the business themselves. Um, similar to some of the other applications that are available, you do still have the opportunity to have reviews on individual locations and hosts. Um, so it does have that potential for people to provide feedback through. Um, and Workden can be monitoring this as well and can be seeing that if one of the facilities isn't meeting the necessary expectations, um, it'll also be visible within the attendance at those locations. So they will be encouraged to improve their own facilities um, and to make sure that they are offering things that are consistent at the level that Workden currently has excelled at. Um, I don't know if one of the others wanted to jump in as well. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I was just going to say it would be part of the uh, initial when you sign up, you know, doing a check of have you got this, this and this, um, you know, coffee, Wi-Fi uh, and the different elements that, you know, are offered um, and then working from there. But, uh, yeah, ensuring that they have those elements from the start is um, ideal So for the business to that's the restaurant or the office space to get those elements together. And just to jump in quickly, I know I've been talking a lot, so I will stop in just one second. Um, but we would also start with the restaurants that you do currently have aligned as partners. And so from the beginning in the initial startup, the quality of the service would be very high. And so other companies would be looking to those as the examples in which to mirror in their future, like when they're looking to um, approach Worked and become their partners as well. Um, so that would be something that they would be able to consider themselves too. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this is Vignesh. Uh, I just want to have uh, a few questions. I, I, li I liked your presentation too. It was a very interesting idea. Uh, one of the few questions I have is based on, uh, if you look at work done right now, it's, it's, core, uh, it's core thing is that they offer a certain uh, branding feel that they, they are giving to their customers and they are rooting it through the people that they uh, that come to them. So when you go, go into a peer to peer model, uh, even though uh, we go every quarterly to check it out, as we expand the compliance cost of maintaining that it's going to be sky high. Have you taken that into account? So is that is in the cost of ensuring? Yes, that's correct. That. Cost of ensuring uh, whether they are able to maintain the the same work done uh, branding that that is needed. Yeah, well, I I suppose that's what we, uh, from our understanding in the analysis, we believe that yeah, that quarterly inspection would ensure. Uh, people are maintaining the that same level of I don't know compliance to what Workden currently offers. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, yeah. Do you, yeah is the costs you're talking about related to the, the travel cost? Or? Uh, yeah, it it involves everything: variable costs and fixed costs, like. Uh, uh, you giving your uh, uh, this thing uh, the the plugs for uh, for working and you sending your people to see if whether the, the teas and uh, everything is available for the customers and everything. I think a lot of those costs would be accounted for in the commission price, and that's why we're taking a fifty percent commission. Additionally to that, it we would. As was said, we're working, Workden should work with the current businesses they have that already have that strong connection. And it would be a slow increase of adding new firms in, making sure that there is a clear levels of communication and that the quality is on both sides. They're letting you know when there's more resources required and vice versa. Uh, coming to uh, like, I just wanted that uh, coming to the 50%, why 50%? Because if you say any peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, like let's take Airbnb or Amazon, they take 15% of the sales. Why, uh, why would you go up to 50% and why would uh, people be okay with it? Yeah, so 50% was uh, just chosen based on 
putting in some numbers and how much we believe we could get back. Um, obviously, reducing it for uh, like to fifteen percent or twenty five percent is less desirable for work then. Um, but maybe as the businesses, uh, well, I think primarily is fifty percent because these businesses wouldn't have earned any money during these times. And so we're giving, giving them the opportunity to come to work then to yeah, offer a space and earn a bit of uh, money on the side. So obviously we could definitely increase it for them as it expands and uh, there's more clients for work then to generate a profit, but the 50% allows that around that $400,000 um, profit over the 12 months. And that will help with, uh, hopefully those initial startup costs that uh, we haven't foreseen. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, my first question, guys, uh, first of all, great presentation. And I love that you're thinking about the, the partners and that partnership. So great, great, great of you guys. My first question is, how do you make sure this is, uh, call it COVID proof? So if uh, in the short term, when uh, everything rolls out, I don't know, I guess uh, we get a little bit of the vaccine, but I think I feel people will still be a little bit scared of going to those places. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, how do you make sure that this is COVID proof quality and the little cleaning stuff is happening and it's not too crowded? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that was the, our first thing we thought about is uh, COVID-19 and the impact. Um, initially, we had some thoughts about other strategies we could take, but we believe this one was the best. And I think it was, potentially mentioned on a slide earlier, but having the application where uh, they'd also be able to go in, um, I think we may have missed it, but having either a QR code to sign in to the uh, desk that they're at, so that would be located on that power board, and that ensures we can get contact tracing. So when they, uh, if something does occur and there are additional um, cases around that area or someone's found to be positive, um, you know, this data that comes from the app after they've scanned in, we can easily, um, that corporate responsibility is there to quickly locate who's had, um, who's been in the vicinity. Um, in terms of cleaning and that, I think, uh, yes, that would probably be another cost that we could uh, include by adding, you know, um, antibacterial wipes and uh, spray and some hand sanitizer. Um, but we think these costs are fairly minimal over the course of the, um, for the business, because they're fairly inexpensive, given their mass production at the moment. And just adding that, like any restaurant, the current social distancing rules, the tables have to be 1.5 metres apart, um, capacity limits of the rooms, all of that will be taken into consideration. And during the initial consult with Workden, they're going to be able to let um, just make sure that it is following those COVID guidelines and the safety procedures in place for that. Awesome. And yeah, that's amazing. And one last question for me, because I, I think France is going to slap me on the end if I go too long. Uh, about the distribution, you mentioned ambassadors and uh, doing the events uh, and all that nice stuff. And we all cannot wait to go back to those, to be honest. Uh, and getting the uh, assumption of getting 15% of uh, the marketplace of the two other companies that are falling out. Uh, what would be the cost of those events? Was there was those included into uh, the analysis? And why fifteen percent? Why not twenty or why not more from? Why would, can I just grab all of their clients? Might take the first or the second part really of that yeah. about the percentage of the market, and then um, maybe Rani does the marketing of those events. Um, but yeah, so the fifteen percent was chosen because uh, Notel had about eight percent. I believe, and serendipity was about 2%. Um, so that gave us, obviously we won't be able to capture the entire uh, market immediately from those companies, but we believe that having such a unique offering as well as the, I guess, what we saw as uh, Workton's key value was that it was significantly cheaper than the rest of the market. And so we believe once the marketing strategies that we mentioned um, that those micro influencers might come and do a bit of their social media from, uh, you know, uploading a video or whatnot um, from one of the locations. 
uh, we believe that people start to realise um, the benefit of these uh, co-working spaces and, and really capture some of the um, some of the others part of the market that didn't realise that there's other spaces that are available. Even looking at work and social media at the moment, you can see how much there is a love of the spaces with people posting Instagram stories, tagging them, things like that, showing off the locations because the people who are going there really love the vibe of the place. It's exactly what they want in terms of the co-working environment. Whilst the cost of those specific events and things haven't been looked at, it's something to look at the further, but definitely things like a brand ambassador would not be a large expense on the company and they would do that in ter- in return you would provide them with free desk space for x amount of days and vice versa i'm good on my side awesome guys well hey good stuff uh you know everybody it's 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 hard enough to do these case comps and uh when you do it uh remotely uh and in a different time zone which i can see uh by the window uh you know hats off to you guys good for you i mean um it's cool that you guys made it made it work you know so uh thanks for that and um it's also very cool to see someone across the world do an analysis on a uh, business that i created with my bare hands and my partner a couple of years ago so this is a very uh, fun experience and, and i just want to thank you guys for taking the time today and, and, and putting your mind together and, and then giving it a shot so thanks you we really appreciated the opportunity to all right perfect thank you guys great presentation and thank you judges for um all of the questions and feedback um right now what's going to happen is uh, my colleague rana is going to assign everybody to a breakout room the team you guys can talk amongst yourself and the judges will um, do the evaluation in the meantime and afterwards um they're going to give feedbacks all right
Hey guys and gals. Hello. All right, let's just give it a minute so everybody's back. Yeah. And everybody is back. All right, so now we're entering the feedback section. Um, judges, floor is yours for any feedback. Okay, right on. I'll jump into it. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> you know, you guys had, you know, it, it's funny, like you, you check the boxes on a lot of things. You really touched on it. What I really like too is you, you know, today you, you spoke about not only caring about uh, you know the, the the host partners, but also you talked about community and the events, and that's what's really nice because sometimes it's very overlooked. You know, people, especially under this time coming out of this pandemic, they'll be craving that social element, and that's what makes businesses very interesting. That's what makes the the shared workspace, the co working, the community. The community element is so key. Anybody can go pay ten bucks to go somewhere. Yeah, we can compete on price and be a, a, a competitor on that. Uh, but what, what makes that dollar figure, why people spend the money coming to work then is because it's not only just a productive workspace and get stuff done or it's close by their house, but also like there's that community element, there's an event, there's like, a, you know, the, the, well, Mike can say Sanka sex, that's a Quebec thing, but the, the happy hour and, you know, and so that's where I'm happy you guys touch on that, the social element. Um, it was really interesting that you guys went the peer to peer marketplace and whenever someone goes and deviates outside of what's in the case. Um, you know, there's a whole different slew of questions because there's a whole, the reality is like, you know, throughout me being in this industry, I know the inside and out and I know everybody in the game and I know what's going on in the peer to peer marketplace. There's a strategic reason why we didn't go that direction, but it's a great idea. And it's obviously a very big, uh, big, uh, you know, a big market and, and a lot of potential there. It's great for scalability. So the thing is though, um, what, the reality of the startup, and, I, and I'm sure many case competitions is typically they're companies that are in a more mature, you know, looking for that fresh idea to, you know, up curve themselves and just stay abreast and, and just get back into that rapid growth phase. Things in the startup is that we are currently in that rapid growth phase and we're trying to find ways to stabilize it, to continue it, to make sure that the product offer is tight enhanced. So that's where it comes down to, okay, how do we enhance? Like, yeah, let's think long-term how we're going to roll out some very interesting um, ideas to, to scale or to go higher, to go from one mil to 10 to hundred, et cetera. But how do we get there? Like there's a, there's the literally, how do we go wheels up? Once we're in the air, we can figure it out, but how do we go wheels up, get off the tarmac? And that's, what's important about enhancing the current restaurant model. And that wasn't touched on too much. Um, and it would have been very nice to see more. Well, it would have been nice to see some engineering elements in terms of how do we structurally enhance it? How do we really, uh, ensure that we can create a quiet productive space within an open room and in a social space and they don't conflict each, each other in terms of the soundproofing, the design, you know, creative ways to enhance the current experience at that restaurant model. Because look, everybody sees what Uber is today, but you backtrack, you know, a decade ago or so, they started with one offer and that one offer dis disrupted the taxi industry, right? And then people were like, oh, what's this cool company? They think Uber, they think, oh yeah, that car, cool. But now you think Uber, they think, groceries, food, the car service, all these things. So we want to make sure that we can actually be known for that one really good thing. So that's where you have to enhance the experience. You guys tapped on that when you talked about community and, and events. That's great because that's very important. But there was, there was a bit of a lacking in terms of developing the current model, perfecting that current model first. So we're super good at that. And then we can branch out and just go crazy and scale up. So that would be my only feedback. But, uh, you know, it's hard to knock someone and penalize someone for thinking ahead because that's great. You always want to. But that's the difference. And that's a challenge. And I know this is different than most cases because the startup reality is that it's savage. It is it is unforgiving. And you make if you can't go wheels up, you'll not fly. You know, when you're in the air, you can coast your engine fills. You kind of glide a bit. But like, nah, you're you're going off the runway. So you got to tighten that thing up to get us airborne. And uh, that was just we're just missing that key ingredient to that first couple steps but overall guys great presentation and look it, you know I, I, as a team i think you guys worked well communicated well you i can tell you guys are comfortable working each other um presentation was great too visuals were fantastic uh so yeah thanks for uh, thanks for, for for your efforts it's great uh hey guys uh, uh so uh i'm i was happy with the presentation when you guys thought out of the box uh, one of the key reasons uh, I liked it was because it was immediately scalable. 
you could go from uh, from just a startup to a mega corporation in like five years yeah uh, one of the key things uh, i i since uh, steven has already spoken about all those things i want to get into the nitty gritties of uh, of your presentation uh, you guys uh, uh, when you guys spoke about 50% uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, it, it's very high like uh, if you look at the marketplace it's not uh, you, it's not sustainable they would uh, immediately flip you out for another uh, person and uh, this one is like uh, uh, very easily to be uh, like copied or do whatever it has been done and second thing is that you, you, your financials like uh, you guys didn't speak about like what is the cost involved in 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 building out the peer to peer website like uh, like uh, reaching out to the new uh, spaces like how much uh, is been involved in uh, in the back end operations cost and the compliance and everything uh, related with going into different people and then uh, at the end of the day uh, you should always give your potential revenue over the next uh four five years to ensure that okay whatever i'm spending right now what are this business model i'm going to make a return on investment uh, at this time of the uh, of the time of the year like maybe three years or four years down the line so that would be my advice like you guys have to be super focused on what is your end goal and uh, how much money you're making i i really liked your presentation you guys had like a very good presentation skills particularly rani had like a really on the spot like she was uh, really strong on what she wanted to say so that was pretty good yeah it's getting tough to talk at the end guys you all check what i wanted to say um but overall i will say uh, great presentation uh i really loved it i really love that we went peer to uh, uh peer to market uh, model uh, i think it's an industry that's working well um the only thing first thought uh, maybe it's i don't know if it's a market that is already saturated uh and i don't know nothing about this, this industry i'm working in finance so i don't know nothing about this but uh i will really love it i think it's a good product to launch fast and go wheels off probably but i don't know if it's sustainable if there's any place uh in that field first of all um but i think it's a good model i i, I was how can i say this i probably won't will have liked to see something creative more like 2021 and how to kind of enhance those restaurants uh place i i, I don't have the the answer to that and we're probably doing this case because nobody really know that answer uh but i would probably love like to find get that and how to enhance the restaurants um it's the core competency of uh word uh, word and so probably find a way to kind of nurture that business build that uh, branding a lot and probably like get those two four to nine, as you mentioned, to probably 20, and then branch, branched out to that peer model uh, that you mentioned. That will probably be uh, my uh, my recommendation. But overall, great presentation. I love the tightness of it. I love everything about a good Q&A. Uh, visual were great. Um, so that, that, was, that would be my feedback, as they already said everything. Francis, how much time do we have left? Yeah, we actually still have three minutes, but three minutes. Uh, that's everything. Um, we can call it. Hey, you know what? Wait a, hey. wait a minute. We're wait. keeping our three minutes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Fire let's away. These guys, let's, let's hear what they got to say, you know? Uh, yeah. Hey, you guys, you know, Seb's Seth, been great today. Um, just asking the, 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 the participants, like, how you guys doing? How are you managing? And I'll let Seb ask that question, but yeah, let's hear from you yeah. guys. Yeah, exactly. I just I'm just wondering because uh, I always find this super interesting how you guys did it, and you're probably across the world doing this. So, how was it? How, how do you find the case? Um, and how was the experience overall? Experience. It was is definitely um tough. For the, it was a very um, unique case. So, I think we we our brainstorming session went for quite a bit because trying to think of something very creative, original. Um, but I think we all worked very well together especially on this Zoom online environment. How was that experience doing it on Zoom or um, whatever online platform you guys use? It definitely um, does add another layer to the, um, to the challenge of it, I suppose, as well. And with only being able to talk one at a time or cut each other off and not being able to really split up between ourselves. Um, so it definitely adds to the challenge, but it's fun still. Like we do really enjoy it. And it was a good challenge, this one, because it is something we haven't really faced before. Mm. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's how it is in the real world. Uh, cause I'm doing so many meetings and 
doing this virtually is uh, definitely different and it's a great experience that you guys are getting from uh, this. Hopefully we're not doing this for too much long, but uh, if we do, at least you have that experience in your pocket and it's a great, great way to learn uh, outside of the case competition is going to be uh, already in your, in your ends. That's true. Yeah. You know, if you can persuade someone to buy into your idea, like anything in business and when you're in the workforce, it's, you know, you have ideas, you want to present them, you know, it, it, it when you're in person is body language, there's the relationship building, there's the, the, all these soft skills that you can navigate. If you can articulate that charm and that influence of when you're speaking or trying to have someone buy into your idea over zoom, which you, you know, I would say hats off to you guys, you really communicated that well today. Um, then that's to your advantage. You know, that's like, that's part of training and the world is fortunately for a company like work then the world is, you know, when the pandemic is over, you know, hopefully sooner than later, uh, you know, we've accelerated how we're going to re work remotely and these companies have invested in a remote workforce and, and those who are passing the torch onto the younger generations, uh, the younger generations have to be comfortable with effectively communicating their ideas and delivering on their, their work uh, remotely independently. So you guys have that self starter mentality. Uh, you guys are picking up on the skills of how to communicate and getting comfortable with using the technologies. Um, you know, it, it seems like a, an annoyance right now, but it's actually great training. Um, so, you know, I wish I, it sounds weird and maybe sadistic, but I kind of wish I had that experience in my university because, you know, I would have been that much more prepared for, for the, the work world. And you guys, uh, when you graduate, you'll have that year of like, yeah, I'm a pro. I'm a pro. I'm a self-starter. People like to put that on their resume, like self-starter. No, you guys are. You can work remotely, independently. You deliver on your grades, your school. You didn't go to class. You motivate yourself sitting, you know, on your, your, your night table or wherever people are working right now. So, you know, good for you guys. It's, it's impressive and, and, and don't, uh, don't sell yourself short. It's, it's a really great accomplishment. All right, guys, that was great. Um, our time is up and uh, Real Consulting, thank you so much. Um, really good presentation and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Are we and, done here? Um, we're almost there. Um, but uh, right now, Jeff, can you just confirm that we can end uh, the live stream? Yep, I sent a message to Rana.